Hello and welcome to another episode of Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. I hope you're all doing wonderfully. I hope you had a wonderful week. Everything must be wonderful. Let's go meet our players. Hello. 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 And have you Hello. had a wonderful week? <laughs> huh? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. That <laughs> We're having a riveting conversation about pancakes. Ooh. Yeah. Pancakes. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Who who's having pancakes right now? Uh, I put it in the in our little memes channel. You put That's pancakes, pancakes in the memes channel? That's correct. Oh, it's a bunny! That is pancakes. It is picture of bunny. Drawing a My bunny. girlfriend painted a painted an Instagram person's rabbit that she really likes. She has a, a strong association with bunnies, so she she painted pancakes. Aww. It's very cute. How wonderful! I um I demand that uh, that uh, I need a commission of Austin's bunny. The Benji. Oh, I'll um, get her on that. Yes. Okay. Winter is also. <laughs> Very much a fan of bunnies. Yeah, I used to be the bunny person in this group until Austin started to actually have bunnies. <laughs> it's hard to top that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you could always get two bunnies. Yeah. I she has two bunnies, have... right? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. That was a long, long time ago, though. Oh, well, if you had two, then you can always get, like, 14. <laughs> That's like the, the Austin route. Yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty much our approach to cats, too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, let us begin with a recap of the adventure so far. It is All right. Jason's turn. <clears throat> oh, was I supposed to prepare something? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bam. Okay. Whoa. Uh, oh, no. I, don't, I don't know how I'm going to communicate. Uh, some of this is going to be part of a letter and some of it's not. I don't know how I'm going to do this, so let's just uh, get into it. All right. It's uh, Talix is going to spend the night writing on his parchment <laughs> with the borrowed chess piece. Yes. <laughs> Prop work. All right. Hello, Mum. As I start this letter, it's the 15th of Malel, and I'm heading back to the colony of Cleon with a very interesting bunch of folks. I know it's been but a month since my last departure, since my last letter, but... Well, and it'll be a while before I get your response, but... <laughs> Let's take that again, I'm nervous, okay. I know it's been but a month since my departure, and it'll be a while yet before I receive your response to my last letter. And I know I'm probably overburdening poor Father Oldman with our correspondence, but... Much has happened, and I suppose I just needed to share with you. Oh, and I haven't been able to return to Arya, but in the meantime, I think I can spare a few gold uh, to lessen, well, to help the family a bit. Let them all know they're in my thoughts, please. Sketch. Yeah! <laughs> Small pine cone like <laughs> pine cone piece. piece. <laughs> <laughs> so last I told you, I was seeking none other than the great Jamiel Fleetfoot. Well, there's been a great development of significance, but, uh... Well, as I keep thinking of how, how to explain it, it seems so surreal. Well, here it goes. We found his book! Yes, the one he's famously been working on for decades, Outlander's Guide to Ladaria. Or at least partially. That's the weird thing. This book is largely, well, blank. But it's been filling itself in, and it seems to contain Jamiel's own memories, and possibly more. Well, clearly I can't grasp enough of this to explain it, so I'll just say that it's yet another confusing development in this wild, magical land. And all the same, uh, this has given us some hope for moving on and carrying out the rest of our mission. As for Jamiel himself... Uh, Talix sets aside the letter for a bit and sketches in his book. Well, again, I suppose it's difficult to get into now. We're thinking, or at least I'm hoping we get a chance to get to him, the, the man. But things are certainly harder than I thought they'd be. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to write to you this night. These past couple of days, 
I've come to better understand just how unforgiving a lawless land can be. I had a sort of thought come to me earlier today about how, even though it's so far from Valkanoth here that she might seem out of reach, perhaps as her children were like seeds scattered away in the wind. We've blown across the sea, far out of sight, but we still carry a piece of her with us. Not just physical pieces, though they're a great comfort, but her spirit's within us as well, and maybe we aren't so disconnected. I often worried about those who died here, like if souls were able to cross back over to Plurna and find her. Thinking about it, though, as her children... ...sprout her spiritual roots in this new soil, and from there... ...the roots will spread and seek her out, and ultimately those will build the foundation of a great bridge between worlds. Anyways... <laughs> If I ever get a chance to deliver a sermon over here, I suppose that can be part of my material. Sorry if that came across as something ominous. I promise I'm keeping myself safe over here. As I mentioned, Professor Alanok and myself are traveling with a larger group now. Which reminds me, I should tell you more about them. But for tonight, well... I'm quite tired. Since we'll be on the road together for a few days yet before we reach the colony, I can pick this up along the way and I can introduce you to everyone and then update you on the interesting bits of our journey, sort of like I'm taking you along with me. It's the 16th, and I suppose it's fair to say the trek back to Cleon is off to an interesting start. We only just reached the road this evening. Most of our day was spent trudging through Swampland. Hopefully my stockings dry up before we break camp in the morning. But most notably, we were assailed by a group of big birds known as redbeaks. That probably sounds funny for you back home, but here these particular birds are quite feared. Namely because they precede an attack from the Daria's least friendly native people, the Aterava. Not to worry though, you know I'm quick to make friends with animals, even these beasties respect Valkanoth's power. And but a few seconds after they descended upon us, I compelled them away. After their masters, after that, their masters dared not attack us. Your gifts truly are a wonderful thing. Know that I'm safe even here, as Valkanoth is forever with me. While perhaps I won the glory of the day, these new companions of ours are all quite impressive in their own right. Some seem to be proper adventurer types, like the heroes out of the old stories. One in particular named Rook is a fierce warrior, but a, na a noble soul. He's part of an association known here as the Phantoms, a frightening name, and indeed some folks find him scary. However, Brook has shown himself to be a great protector, which, as he explained it, it's the ultimate purpose of these Phantoms. Ladari is rife with dangers to our colonists, and we're lucky to have capable people like Brook fighting for us. I heard him talking with the professor a bit as I was heading to sleep for tonight. Oh right, uh, we have to take turns waking up to watch camp over the night, so I'm using this time to write to you. Uh, they were discussing the sorts of rituals he performs before a battle. Brook explained that the Phantoms, though they're Plurnin, Brook is a furbolg from Hilniar, uh, they've taken up Ladarian arcane magic as part of their practice. In truth, it's rather gruesome, and it's, I suppose it's a big reason for the group's unsavory reputation. I must admit, though, with some shame, the longer I've spent in this place, the more I've become accustomed to such magics. This leads me to the next of our new companions, somehow even more unusual than the last. When we met Brooke, in his care was a human boy, school age, who we eventually learned was named Pip. He does not speak, but doesn't lack the ability from what I gather. In any case, he's found alternative means of communicating with us. Yes, he's also a user of arcane magic and prefers to commune through a rather rude talking rat creature with he keeps as, which he keeps as a pet. <laughs> Pip was the one with whom I felt the most uneasy in the beginning, but I learned there's much more to him than what can be gleaned at first impression. For one, he talks to animals, not even as I do, but freely and limitlessly, as one would speak with people. I've not seen an even, even an arch cleric possess such a strong innate connection to nature and this colonial boy has never even set foot on Valkanoth's soil. Today we forged for mushrooms together, and I took the chance to encourage him to come meet her. After seeing that demonstration of her power this afternoon, he seemed quite receptive. I have no doubt Pip could learn to become a, remar a remarkable cleric. If only he'd be willing to overcome his reliance on whatever it is that's power in that magic. He really does seem to be such a nice boy. I'm beginning to suspect it's that rat thing that's corrupting him. <laughs> It 
It's now the 18th of Malil. Sadly, I did not get a chance to write yesterday as it was raining terribly hard and I dared not chance bearing my books and papers within our meager leak and shelter. Though our travels have remained peaceful since we've reached the road, that night seemed to test a lot of us. Perhaps we've just been too long without homely comforts, but the group's energy was notably depleted this morning. Brooke and Pip seemed especially tense. I know they stayed up and talked about something last night, but they couldn't be heard over the rainfall. At least they still seem to be planning on sticking with us for now, so maybe I shouldn't worry. There's another thing which happened last night, though, and I suppose, I suppose it's the primary reason things feel so uncertain. Sketch. Oh. Well, it all began because of something that happened the day before I began this letter, back in the place where we found the book. Simply enough, I had a dream, one that I remembered. I know it's unremarkable to most, but it was brand new to me. I never expected it to be so real in every regard. I still remember every detail. Naturally, I was ever so curious about how the dream happened and what I'd seen within. But on that note, have you ever heard of a sort of person with purple skin? Is it common for us to invent such things in dreams? Well, back to the point, I was asking the others about that day, mostly about some things I'd forgotten while I slept, as usual. And ultimately, the professor offered me his help. And I sort of agreed to let him dig into my mind. I know it sounds terrible, but in the moment I thought a genius like him might know something. In the end, it was a bad idea. We seemed to have different goals for that particular exercise. While I thought we could just jog my memory, he seemed rather more keen on extracting information. Uh, of course, the professors oh. have been ever so gracious to me. To be able to meet someone like him, an extremely interesting character and part of a vanishingly rare race, yes, but also a cleric who's a supreme academic. Well, to call myself fortunate, it's an understatement. His wisdom's proven invaluable in our time here, and I'm sure it'll continue to do so into the future. I could probably take responsibility in being a bit more clear with my boundaries. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have been so worried in the first place. I hope I haven't offended him. Come to think of it, the person I should have queried on the subject of dreams is our Ladarian companion, Tekka. From what we've seen, dreams seem to hold some significance in his religion, or maybe his culture. Oh yes, the last group, the last member of our group is Ladarian. Well, technically he's what's called a Tieflin here, the offspring of a Ladarian and a Plurnan parent. Don't you think we might understand one another greatly? Actually, he can be somewhat difficult for me to understand. Not that he lacks knowledge of the Plurnan language, he's surprisingly fluent, and it's the only language I've heard him speak. But still, I think he must have been raised amongst Ladarian people rather than colonists. He exhibits many of their particular practices, as mentioned, and worships one of their idols. All this makes him a spectacular potential subject of research, of course. But I'm not sure how willing he is to share a story. For his kind, such stories are often not particularly happy. Well, I'm reaching the end of my shift for this night's watch, and I can feel myself drifting off to sleep as I write. Tomorrow we'll finally reach the settlement, and from there we'll be meeting with a friend of Professor Alanok, whom he said could offer us guidance on our mission somehow. Honestly, I'm just excited to sleep under a roof and eat hot food. And of course, I'll visit the local prayer straight away to get this letter sent along with my report to the Jade Council. There are many more questions I wanted to ask about going on back home, but... I feel as though it will already be a great struggle to fit this letter into the envelope. Do tell the rest how I miss them. Maybe someday when these lands are tell when these lands are tamed, the whole family can come and join me here, eh? I jest, but not entirely. Until then, I'm very much looking forward to your next letter. Love, Talix. Although, if by any chance you hear from Father, please do tell him to contact me and Arya, of course. We still haven't heard any news of his whereabouts. The Professor and I agree he's probably the single person who might be able to get a request even more than, Jam even more than Jamiel could, have, uh, could if we found him. Alright, thank you so much, and sorry again about the meager funds, but we're making great progress together here, and I'm sure there are brighter days ahead. It's just like you used to say about looking ahead to the lights instead of the shadows behind you, right? There were some pretty wise words, as it turns out. I love you. It's Alex.
。おお。<笑>どうしたいのパイントネットロン。パイントネットロン。パイントネットロン。パイントネットロン。And、so、his、nice. handwriting. We talked about you. I, you readily offended me last time. Just wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> really,、yeah. Oh no, my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Your lack of transparency is seen as pompous and rude. <laughs> you should allow me to delve into the depths of your memories and learn all of your secrets. <laughs> I totally should. Super shady, after all. You're not one of those folks, right? Oh no, am I? <laughs> Never、uh. loaning you my bishop again. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote very well with that bishop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, considering these drawings were done with a bishop, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah.、Here's、straight your... lines of text and everything. Here's your inspiration. That's the for explanation the for the bad drawings. Talix is actually a much better artist than this. But, you know, <laughs> work with what you got. <laughs> That was really good, Jason. Oh, amazing、so、work! Uh, here's your here's your inspiration down here,、mm-hmm. and thank you, thank、uh, you. Um, reminder that inspirations do not stack. You can o- only ever have one at a time, which means that uh, uh, Sid, you should think、yeah. about using yours,、yeah. and <laughs> Dennis, you too, because.、Uh, <laughs> Your birthday is coming up, so next week you'll get an ins- a free inspiration for that. So use this. Oh God! Let's get in a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Punch an old lady in the streets. All right. Bar fights. You know, part of Sex to... said he has a friend, but what if we decide that they're not a friend? <laughs> <laughs> um, what if we make the executive decision? Bag, Jason. Oh, I will do what、disappear. you want. If you can best、What? me in a duel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the bishop is going to pontifex. Yeah, yeah this is, <laughs> makes sense.、Uh, eventually, you guys will have to get proper quills. There, now it's more like a pen. Yes, that's part of the plan. I should probably open my <laughs> character on D and D Beyond, eh? Probably. Probably. Right here. Is the town of Cleon? Oh, God! It's so good. Even the second time seeing it, it's so good. Yeah, one of the things I thought about doing was trying to sketch this, and I was like, "Nah." <laughs> 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 Five more weeks. We'll see. Perhaps like you just had to like get the right angle, so all you see is really just one house. So what、oh, yeah. you're saying is, I just have to really drag out this Cleon arc for another five episodes, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's what you're saying, right? No. I can,、uh, I can give one lecture per session. <laughs> All right. So, Winter, I'm going to have Squeak go and check out the whole town ahead of us to make sure <laughs> so that we can see. <laughs> Go, I go. Yeah, go ahead and describe everything to us so that we, especially、no. everyone's kitchens. Right, he's a, a lot of privacy, so he's probably going inside. So if you could describe all the denizens one by one and their living locations and you know their cleanliness levels and、uh, all that. A warm breeze welcomes you into the settlement of Cleon. <laughs> What would your party like to do? <laughs> you might want to be careful with Squeak, that owl folk.、Uh, I don't know. Hey,、uh, Pip, you should send your rat to go investigate the entire town. <laughs> um. Well, uh, it's sorry. It's like afternoonish, right? Um. Yes. Yep. Middle of the afternoon. I hope. I don't think we got to stay here last time we passed through, Professor. But personally,、no. I need to see. I need to see the local parish here and. Well, we need to see your friend, and、uh, we need to do some shopping, I imagine. Yes, I believe、uh, we're up stocking up on some supplies. Is in order, and I have to see a cat about the divination. A cat. A cat. 
You'll understand later. <laughs> oh. Squeak turns invisible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, the rest of you are just along for the ride here right now. Uh, is there anything you need to do in town? Hmm. I have questions for the people living here. Oh. Other than that, I am free. Nazareth Dorans love questions. Yeah, maybe we could go to the, one of their public squares and... Well, what sort of questions are we talking about? Hmm. Dreams. Well, that could be construed as a form of philosophy. Well, I guess uh, let's head further in and see if we might find a general store. We may have some uh, accommodations or something, just in case. It's always good to have a home base to return to. Yes, I, I badly want to sleep at an inn or anything. Place with a bath, preferably. Well, go on. Lead the way, I'm in no hurry. Oh. The cat can wait. Okay, well... Uh... Okay. I'll lead the way. Towards? Oh. Well, so yeah, we're... Sorry, which direction are we coming from? Uh, this side. So, okay. um, this is, this would be the eastern side of Cleon, and uh, as you approach on, on this particular edge of the town, uh, what these are, it's, uh, they're like the foundations of buildings that are currently in the process of being built. Um, so first you oh. go past some, like, work-in-progress areas. Um, also your minis are going to be enormous compared to <laughs> this, but... <laughs> Everything is to scale. Um, well, yeah, I would... Talix is probably just going to look for a decently sized building that's obviously not a house and look for either a general store of some kind or an inn. But as we walk by this uh, church, he will try to, like, just get a quick glance at it and get a feel for it. And I think mm -hmm. you pretty much already told me what it was going to be like, so... If there's um, anything more that I pick up, I guess you can let me right. know. Well, uh, the, as you as you would pass uh, past this this wooden stage, which is currently empty, uh, nobody is there, uh, and you glance on the other side of the very wide river, and you pass uh, beyond one of the bridges that cross it, uh, you can see from a distance that uh, what's on the other side is uh, a temple uh, with uh, two double doors that are currently just wide open you're a bit of a distance away so you can't really get a good uh look at the inside but uh, the outside um for talix and pontifex based on where they have lived some part of their lives um a let's say generic looking temple like this is not too unusual um although it's not unusual for you it would be unusual in most of plurina where generally the um the pantheon of Blackenath and all of the animal deities is in full display both inside and outside, while at his particular temple it appears to be less obviously uh, showing this. On the way, uh, you are pretty much going to stumble onto this uh, very large building that uh, uh, has a sign uh, with a winged, uh, a symbol of a winged cat climbing into an open window. Uh, and beneath that are the words, the trespassing Tressim. Oh, the Tressim. They might have some affiliation with the church. <laughs> um... And, by the way, walking to town, we probably walked by some people, right? Yeah. What was the general vibe? Uh, did we 
attract a lot of looks. Suspicious looks. As a group of unusual people, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You do attract some looks, but, and this would be particularly, um, it would particularly get the attention, the attention of Brooke and the Tekka. Uh, the fact that the glances that uh, uh, come your way do not appear to be hostile or particularly uh, shocked or surprised. Um, there is a bit of like, um, almost curiosity, but nobody <laughs> stops you. Uh, everybody seems to be quite uh, busy. They just they they have the people of this town kind of have this this uh, very quick way of walking, and they all seem to be doing something as they go around. Somebody, uh, some people are just like reading and writing some notes as they walk, uh, uh, or they're carrying a lot of things in their arms. They just seem to be just very busy. Huh. The um, the sign for the trespassing tressum, the the one that actually depicts the tressum going into a window, is the sign like within reach? Uh, I picture it like hanging that, like, it from maybe... above uh, ab above the doorway. Uh, so perhaps like if you uh, if you could send your arm up, you will be able to yeah, touch like, it. Yeah, like some like maybe Pontifex or Brooke might be able to reach it just yeah. due to their height. What's okay. happening over here? With <laughs> what is this? Uh, aerobics. Um. <laughs> <laughs> aerobics. Oh my goodness. Oh, you have them all on the stable mode so they won't fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, if we're, uh, is that where we're, where we're going in, Talix? Uh, this looks like something interesting. Yeah. I think, like, as we're walking up uh, towards, like, the sign of it, Pontifex, like, reaches up and, uh, like, pets the tressum that's, that's you know, carved into the wood sign or whatever and says, you know, the tressums are, uh, they're the, the mischievous ones, the good and bad luck. It is always good to be on the good side of a tressum. It is a bit of superstition. But, uh, well, that's a good point. Yes, I, um, I recommend that you all... Uh, be on the Tresum's good side, lest the worst befall you. So he's like scritching at the not actually their cat. Gleeful doing so. Now he just sounds like this is the cat he wanted to talk to. Maybe it is. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and... Well, are we all... you want to go into... Well, we are traveling as one group, yes? Okay. <clears throat> I will go ahead and uh, take my hat off and enter. Okay. Um, this... As you open the door and you peek around, uh, you can see that this small establishment looks like uh, plenty of other taverns you might have seen in the past on either continent, although uh, this one hasn't had enough time to become dirty or worn. Uh, the furniture still looks new, the floorboards don't creak, and the only smell is that of good, warm food. Oh, what a lovely place. Oh. Oh. I forgot how much I missed Nazardora. <laughs> um, alright. Wait, am, am I the one doing the talking here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, no qualms. <laughs> well, uh, Talix will walk up to the bar. There is a, a woman behind it, uh, uh, a human with uh, black hair collected in a bun, uh, who doesn't seem too busy uh, at this hour of the day. Uh, there's only there's only a couple of tables that are occupied here, and uh, some some people enjoying some ales. Um, and as she sees you come in and approach, she uh, waves at you. Compared to uh, compared to your group, uh, um, she she is the one who stands out for how uh, how normal a human looks compared to you. Um. Good afternoon, lady. Uh... Afternoon! You're new we, in town, aren't you? 
Oh, yes, we are. Uh, you know, uh, we, we came over from Arya. We're just passing through. But uh, we need a place to stay for... I have looked at the others. A uh, night? A couple nights? A couple nights, probably, right? Uh, can you... Mind a bit of rest? Yeah, can we... Uh... Get that for a couple nights, please? Uh, she glances past Talix and at the rest of you, and um, you see her gaze sort of like resting um, for a moment uh, over Tekka. Uh, then, then back to Talix, and she says, Yes, uh, we do have a few rooms available, not a lot of travelers. Uh, uh, do you. Do you want to share a room or. Is it five? Uh. Oh, there's no mm. need to be exorbitant. Of course we can share our rooms. Yes? Uh, I'm a little low on funds. Maybe that's for the best. If it's okay with all of you. I mean, it's no different to staying outside together. Might as well share a room. Also, uh, is there a bath here? Yes, in the back. Lovely. She points at a door. Well, uh, should we maybe get comfortable in our new our new room before we set out for our next leg of things? Maybe take the chance to uh, freshen up a bit, relax, maybe. Yeah, sure. Uh... You are uh, free to go ahead of me a little bit. I I wish to have a conversation with this woman. Oh, okay. Talix will wait. like look for the. Uh, wait. Oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the price. I was about to say. <laughs> I uh, I don't stay in. I don't stay in these places too often. Oh, you I really want a bath? Um, so she... I, she... Can, uh, I can cover the... <clears throat> I think... I think we should split, right? I'm okay with that. Don't have to pay everything by yourself. Oh, okay. Appreciate it. How much is it? The, she, she pulls a, a, a key from beneath the counter and puts it uh, on it uh, and says, Well, that will, be, that will be five silver per person, and we have a room with four beds, and I make sure to get somebody uh, to move in a fifth one. Hmm. Oh, okay. Um, well, five silver. Yep, I'll put this five is for the mm. two nights. Two nights, correct? Two nights will be a total of ten per person. Oh. A All right. fifth bed will not be necessary. I oh. will sleep outdoors. Taka, please. No, there's no need for that. You're welcome here. It is not about welcome. It is about peace. Tekka, you are just always so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there is uh, no need to pay for the two nights up front, yes? We could just do one night at a time. We have a bit of a tumultuous schedule, you understand. He, you can pay per night, yes, absolutely. Okay, uh, I'll... Here's the, uh, let me get the five silver. Are we all paying for our room, then? Yep. One of X just smiles at you. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, here's a gold. For the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> you would remember from our flight here that he he literally does not have a copper piece to his name. I mean, I, I thought so, but I was just gonna... <laughs> 
Uh, Brook okay. also puts five silver on onto his table. Pip uh, oh. reaches down to his pouch <laughs> and sifts through some of the rocks, <laughs> uh, and he pulls out a couple of copper pieces and hands them to you, Talix, and then starts fishing for more. Oh! He finds a silver. <laughs> oh, there's okay. there's a couple. <laughs> you know what? Um, hold on to all this. Um. It's okay, I, I'm rife with silver right now. You might need something like a new shiny rock that you find somewhere in a store. <laughs> I kind of like <laughs> wince at my own. Uh... <laughs> well, you know, you get the point. His eyes open wide. <laughs> it's a promise now, he'll expect it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and pay his five silver too. <laughs> so I paid 15 <laughs> silver for y'all. <laughs> Talix did um, most graciously without complaints. And Brook paid for his own and Tech <laughs> and Tekka is not staying, correct? Yeah. Okay. Uh, she takes some money, puts it away, lets you take the key that's already on the counter. Uh, she offers you a drink if you're, uh, she asks if you'd like to take a seat. Oh, is that... is that on the house? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, well, breakfast, uh... uh... Breakfast tomorrow morning will be... Uh, is included in the price, but... Uh, if you'd like to eat it tonight, that there's plenty of tables. Oh, I'm sure we will, but... Maybe uh, we'll make the rounds first and come back and have that drink tonight. For now... I'm gonna get to that bath and drop this backpack in our room. Oh, my shoulders. Uh, the rooms are past that door, and yours will be the very first one on the right. All right, Talix does those things. And as uh, Talix begins to <clears throat> to head uh, in the direction it was pointed to, um, through the uh, the open uh, doorway that he was uh, gestured towards uh, uh, in comes uh, a winged cat uh, <clears throat> that is uh, uh, pure white, white fur white feathers, uh, just uh, walking across the floor and as you, as you come by, the Trasim just uh, goes around you um, rubs her face uh, on your ankles and continues on Oh I, can I convince her to stay and receive pets for at least like Five to ten minutes. I will uh, delay everything for this. <laughs> what kind of convincing? Is this like the, the red no, not, kind not, of convincing? No, yeah, <laughs> no. Just, you know, try to find a nice spot to scratch her before she runs away. Okay. Um, I hear yeah, that you... Trussums like it where the wing meets the shoulder. Yeah, right between the wings, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah, difficult right. place for their legs to reach. <laughs> Moving forward, and his trust him seems to be used to uh, uh, receiving attention, and uh, she'll stay for about a minute before she is done. During that minute, Pip will uh, go, Hey, you're so pretty. What's your name? <laughs> um... He trusts him, licks one of her paws, and meows back, which Pip, un uh, Pip understands to mean, They call me Trixie. Oh. <laughs> Cute. Probably helped. Pip loves on her. <laughs> as much, as much... As much space that is that is on this cat, it, it, the cat is now covered in hands. <laughs> <laughs> Again, uh, the the Tresen will allow pets and scratches and attention for about a minute, and then she, she'll be done. She seems to be right at home in this tavern. Um, she'll move past you and sit be beneath one of the empty tables and clean herself. Hey, so, uh, 
as I was saying before, uh, and he is speaking in um, an Hanek, if anyone else understands that. Uh, I, that's yeah, that's Nazwa doing, right? So it, it would make sense that she speaks this. He would mm -hmm, just assume. Mm -hmm. Saying, I, I had a couple of questions for you. You seem like the type of person who would know some things. Uh, she replies uh, back in, in a fluent Ananic. Um, well, that is an assumption that a lot of people make of us. Right. Uh, so this, uh, this place... Uh, this is an Ezradoran colony, obviously. Um, these uh, these platforms that are uh, around the city, are these for public speeches? That is correct. And is it like an open mic night where just anyone is allowed to do so, or are there some form of qualifications or credentials necessary? There is a... Um... There is a notebook on each stage where you'll find uh, uh, who has booked uh, which area uh, for what amount of time on which day. Whenever nobody is there, <clears throat> you are free to uh, you're free to take the stage. Um, leave it free for whenever people have it booked, and you cannot book it for more than two hours at a time. I see. Uh, and uh, I suppose I have uh, one more thing. Um... He like looks to uh, looks to the the group of people and says uh, like to, to to the group and looks back to her. Uh, my friend here, uh, the one you were just speaking to, he's a very gracious man and is uh, taking care of us as need be. Um, but I myself am short of coin. I, I do not wish for him to provide for me the entirety. Uh, is there any form of uh, work or services that you would require? I am. Uh, I know I look very old and venerable, but I can assure my usefulness. A place like this could always use some touch-ups. I can perhaps fix anything that requires fixing. I can, uh, you know, uh, fill up your water storage facilities. Roll a persuasion check. Although, uh, you can sort of tell from, like, the, a brief uh, uh, glance uh, uh, that, that she looks away from you for a moment in, like, a thoughtful manner, like she had perhaps something in mind for you to do, but as she looks back at you, she seems to, like, change her mind. Um, perhaps something about your appearance uh, doesn't... She doesn't seem quite uh, uh, ready to just... Uh, get you to do work in here uh so she just in his hands is a a brass and silver staff and then a a gold plated looking orb thing and, and like these metal wrist guards that are decorated and like silver inlaid boots he doesn't look <laughs> like the type of person who has no money and but <laughs> and also most uh, most likely she just assumes you're too old to actually perform any physical task uh but she sure. you know she just gr very gracefully turns turns you down and says oh that that is quite all right actually uh, not a lot of people come through here and a lot of people say um this place never gets too busy right that is uh, understandable um would you perhaps know of any places uh, in town where they might uh be looking for work um we have our own goals, of course, but uh, there's always ample time to earn some coin. Maybe learn a little bit about the place. Is there like a a workers' wanted board or something? Look, the the quickest way to make any money in here would just be to head for the market and sell anything you're no longer using. All right. Okay. Um. Well, thank you for your uh, hospitality and for your time. Uh, I think that will be all. Um, uh, if I may. Yes. Are you? And she, she, she looks at the, the amulet that that Pontifex is wearing. I don't suppose you happen to be a, a practicing man of faith. Uh, yes, of course. I am, uh, in a form of capacity, a retired cleric of the goat. Uh, but I have not lost my divine connection to him. I can still perform. Uh, divine feats of magic and such. And of course, I am ordained as a priest. Uh, then perhaps there is... I can think of uh, one way for you to perhaps offer your services to the community. 
uh, the... Our priest uh, has been very busy lately. Uh, if you have the ability to, to do what he does, to, to heal injuries and diseases, I'm sure he could use your help. He'll like look back to Talix and say, well, my friend, it looks like we have a lead. Something we can do to give back <laughs> to the community. Talix is bathing. Oh, I thought you were still there. <laughs> yeah. I thought you were still sorry. there like shortly after the cat. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> says, okay, well, I will uh, thank you for the advice. Uh, I am not the only priest among my friends. Perhaps we can do more than just help. You know, it's, and then tries again to get you to sit down and enjoy some beer while your friend is bathing. As I said before, I am entirely devoid of coin. I uh, left all of my belongings at my estate back in Vosil. You mean it quite literally? No coin? Is a, uh, not a single copper piece. Of any kind? Uh, Ladarian money? There is a banker in town. Any I cigars? I am not even familiar with Ladarian currency. I did not know there was a difference, to be honest. I am very fresh here. Well, it does sound like you should definitely speak with Egon. Is this the priest you spoke of? Uh, yes. And do you know what, uh, what he is a cleric of? Does he follow a particular deity? The fox. Ah, I like him already. Wonderful. And you said his name was Egon? Uh, yes, yes. Egon Hartbloom. Egon Hartbloom. I will remember it. I will uh, seek him out at the earliest convenience. Well, then, then I will see now, you... For now, I believe we will retire. I will see you later tonight, hopefully with some more money in your pocket. In the event I come into some, you will be my first stop. She smiles. He'll, like, giggle. He'll do that old man giggle that, like, you know, signals the end of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she starts, like, we'll start a glass. <laughs> yeah, he starts to walk down the hallway towards the room, like his little, the end of his staff kind of clicking on the wood and his boots scraping along the side, doing his little old man <laughs> laugh. What are, uh, what is, what are Brooke and, and Tekka uh, doing during this? I Wait, is Pip not here either? I know that Pip and Talix were, like, petting the cat, and then Talix eventually went off to, uh... uh. Faith. Well, do you guys want to join and take a bath as well? I would be down for it. Pip, take a. I will be fine. There are many things left to do in the day. We'll spend some time here. Takes um, a refresher. Later. Tekka will then walk off to one of the more fill tables in the tavern. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Uh, there is one table where um, there are three people currently sitting and sharing a drink. Afternoon. Hmm. Have you... Go ahead, go ahead. Yes. Have you had unusual dreams, possibly? <laughs> uh, one of them, uh, a human man, just turns and sort of like the there is he pushes the chair away from you. It's just like an, an inch, uh, <laughs> Jason. Uh, it's like a, a moment of, of surprise where he pulls himself away from you. Uh, the other human uh, reacts a bit more, uh, a bit more cal calmly uh, to your to your appearance and lack of introduction. And he just sort of like does this way with his hand and says, <laughs> "Why would that be your business?" It is essential for me to know. They all glance at each other, and then the one who spoke to you just says, No? Understood. And Tekka will walk back to the group. <laughs> what about Pip? Is he going to the bath with me? Uh, 
Pip will walk with you to the bath, and is this like an outdoor bath? Uh, yes. Okay, so Pip will will walk with you towards the, the outdoor bath, and once he gets there, Pip will look down at the, the bath water, and then his head will slowly turn towards the river that's like 50 feet away, <laughs> and he'll roll his eyes and just go over towards the river. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. What are you doing? It's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangerous. Do we know anything about the river? <laughs> you can't just jump in a random river. It's, it's the same river water. Where... It's got tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same river where you guys, like the previous day, got uh, some water from and Pip, you found a, a pebble in it. Uh, the road has been following that river for the last day of walk. Um, so you know that up until this point, at least it's it's clean, and you did uh, use it to, to clean yourselves previously. Um, but they the, built their city on it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <clears throat> the quote unquote bath in the back uh, does take water from this river, and it does have a bit of like a, a half wall that's just like wooden planks that, that offer a little bit of protection. And there's uh, towels and soap. Uh, pip. nice. Do you not want to take the bath? Pip just gestures towards the river. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. You just be careful. I I wanted to ask you, and he gets a bit closer and on the and, and tries to go on a level with Pip. Do you mind if I tell Telex of our talk and potentially with a sketch he can help sketch your parents so it's easier to find some? Um, Pip shakes his head no. Wait. No, to... You don't want me to talk? Wait, okay. Let me ask yeah, this. Then <laughs> Pip nods. <laughs> ah. Alright, that might say, make things a bit harder. And... I don't know, how do you, how do those basses work? Do you just take off your clothes and go into the water, or is it like... Um, ...that way you undress? I think so. Whatever, it's medieval times. Alright, who takes Where's off the clothes and goes hasn't into been the water? water? Whatever, dude, these people have spaceships. <laughs> 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 well, he joins Telex. <sighs> Talix is probably just kind of like laying down with his eyes closed, just like head reclined back for a bit, just kind of like trying to let all of the stress of the past few days accumulated just kind of like soak away. It feels nice to be back to uh, to civilization for you, Talix. Yeah. The water is even surprising, surprisingly not as cold as a river. Oh, Vitalix did bring his own soap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess Brook will just make himself comfy in the bar and the bass as well. Okay. Yeah, Vitalix won't start a conversation with Brook won't. <laughs> at least not at the start. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can think of something. <laughs> All right, Brooke and Talix um, are bathing. Real quick, is this the first time that we've seen Brooke take off those arm wrappings, or is he still wearing oh. them in the bath? Oh well, he—you would have seen it like every evening and morning, taking it. Oh, off. Okay, he takes them off often. Okay. Yeah, yeah. What does his forearms look like underneath those? Well, completely scarred on both sides. Okay. Uh, it was like more fresh and old and. Hardened and healed and not healed so well. Scars. And no fur. Because mm. of scarring. Are there any other scars visible on his now derobed self? No, it's only on the lower arms. Okay. Alright, I guess. I'm maybe not based upon if I close no, but I'm Maybe curious. Talos will say something about it. Oh, what Telex um, also can see now is uh, double panzer hat. 
if he hasn't noticed before. Sorry, what, what was that? Uh, the tattoo of the two panther hats. Oh, on, yeah. On the right backhand. Hmm. So, uh, I'll tell us a little gesture to your arm, whichever, like any significant arm above the water. Mm hmm. Uh, that's. That's the price you pay for being a phantom, I guess, huh? <laughs> I guess you could say so. I wouldn't recommend trying it, if you get no benefit out of it. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the time sorry, sorry, that got me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tal Talix leave and like kind of chuckle a little bit, like, yeah, well, I wasn't planning to. <laughs> All right, just making sure. That's, uh, you know, I, I've, I've seen some other Ladarian magic. They didn't have to do such things. Uh, I, I don't know how all the magics works. All I know is that even if there are a cane or arcane, they're different, have different uses, and obviously, uh different ways of being uh, shown. But you're using your own body. Is that... Uh... It is necessary to be able to use that magic. Otherwise I can't. It's it's like a price I have to pay. It's... Well, I just... Please don't feel too eager to do it for my sake. <laughs> I mean, you seem good enough with a sword. You, you don't have to get yourself hurt just for, well, whatever you think you have to protect. I thought you know what we phantoms are, but it's okay. Don't worry. Oh. I'll use it for myself. It, it's not only there to protect you, it's also there to help me out. It's... I also have less harmless smart magic. Hmm. Back from home. But it's not as helpful in fights. If it helps, I don't use it outside of fights. Okay. I mean, I'm... don't get me wrong, you're very impressive. I... I just feel a little sad sometimes, is all. It's okay. I chose that. Nothing of that is your fault. Or anything you can do about it. It's like most people choose the way they want to live, right? I know. And... I happen to be pretty good at what I'm doing. So, I guess I'll do it for now and for as long as I can. I don't plan on dying, if that is your worry. Hmm. Alex is just gonna get real quiet after that. Hmm. Also, while you're impressed with me, you should be proud of yourself as well. The last days haven't been easy. Oh, uh, well, thank you. So, kind of, yeah. I was just going to say, Talix is kind of like spaced out a little bit. <laughs> Fine. Guess once Brooke realizes that, he will also quiet down and lay back in the bass and just enjoy the cl getting clean process. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um,. What about the others? You have a bit of time before Alex and Brooke are going to join up with you. Uh, Pip, you're, you're in the river? Uh, yeah, Pip is <clears throat> just sort of like he's he's on, on the edge, his feet are dangling in the river, just sort of swishing his legs around, feeling the water. Um, just sort of looking down, seeing if he can see like any animals in the water or any like really cool looking plants mm -hmm. 
Uh, Just yeah. looking around. Th like, this he's... river is full of uh, uh, plant life. At the bottom and on the surface. As he's yeah, looking me. down yeah. uh, ah. at it, he's... <laughs> <laughs> he's he's taking in his reflection and then he he looks around and just really starts to take in the area um and looking at all of these different people and and just races that he's never seen before never even imagined um and uh yeah pip's just in, enjoying the scenery for a little bit um but after after like the the fresh feeling dies down a little bit, um, he'll start uh, he'll start like scanning the water for like anything really cool that he could he could pick out and take. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, mm, yeah, after after a while, they just start looking around for for uh, perhaps a pebble or some kind of something pretty that catches your eye. Um, you you sense some movement uh, uh, nearby, and uh, you see that uh, somebody has approached, and not, not, not you directly, but like um, just the, the side of the river that you're on, about maybe uh, 15 feet away from you. And it's a, it's a woman of a very, very short stature. Uh, who's carrying this uh, uh, this small basket uh, uh, with a few things on it, and she she puts a basket near the edge of the river, and then glances at you, and then um, almost does like a double take, just like surprised to see you there, and then looks around um, as if looking for something, and looks back at you and squints, and then she she approaches, um, and uh, with a with, with her almost uh, pretty much being at your at your uh, eye level, um, she. She just puts her hands together and um, and says, "Oh, and you, what? What? Where? Where's your mother?" Uh, <laughs> Pip looks at her, and then like abruptly points in 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 the direction behind her, and then starts running. Jesus. <clears throat> Do we see that? Um, n the the ones yeah, who are we're, currently we're bathing in, uh, would, would not. Uh, right. uh, and I th think that uh, Pontifex and Tekka would still be in the tavern at this moment. Yep. Uh, yeah, Pippi ran off without looking back. Um, you hear her calling after you, just yelling, Hey! Uh, but you're off. I did it. Do I get XP? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't kill her. Yet. <laughs> uh, tech and point effects, are you going to do anything while you wait for the others in particular? Um, hmm. Teacher, does hmm, the book speak of this place? That's a good question. And I'll pull out Jamuel. Jamuel Journal. <laughs> <laughs> Jamuel Journal. <laughs> Damn it. Who, who started this? I think it was Sid. Yeah. So, someone Damn called it. him Journal. Journal or something. Journal. Journal. All right. Um, you open a book. Uh, what are you asking? Uh, what were you asking? If he knows anything about this settlement? Do you know this place? Yes, that would make sense. He did travel this land fairly thoroughly. I imagine there is a shorter list of places that he has not been. also makes sense. It is very memorable. Ooh. 
One does not so easily forget the encounter with Itrasim. True. It is... cute. Hmm. Book. Are you aware of tribes nearby this settlement? Is Matt forgetting masked people? Or is that new? Uh, it was in the lore that got dropped. Like, it's, it's written into the book. Mm. From whenever we got that, like, stuff written right, into right. the beginning of the book, yeah. I believe they're uh, also it's... in the pamphlet. Uh, uh, right. Then it's Matt. You want to tell us all about Ezin? Oh, so the Ezin. Okay, no mind. Yeah, yeah. All right. Hey, that's probably good, like, for, for the viewership, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Some inside information. Just, like, what the group knows. Okay. Uh, general basic knowledge uh, that, that at least all of you would possess. Uh, these people are called uh, the Ezin. Uh, and they are well known for being uh, completely uh, wrapped in clothing, and they, they hide their faces with masks, so nobody has ever seen what an Ezin actually looks like uh, and instead of living in uh, in their own towns there's always one or many more of them in a colony or in a settlement of a different uh, Valarian race uh, always they're usually working as doctors uh, and that's those are the basics they would know Ah, uh, Tekka. Mm -hmm. You specifically speak their language. God, right. Yeah. Hmm. Fine. Teacher, I will speak with the Essen. Oh, sure. Uh, would you mind if I were to accompany you? I've been wanting to meet one of these. Hmm. No. Should we tell the others? Uh, it's probably for the best. It would be uh, perhaps traumatizing for Telix to come out and to have lost sight of us. <laughs> <laughs> he's not. He's not a like puppy. <laughs> he's the type to uh, to go into a state of panic rather simply. <laughs> oh my goodness! If the, if I had I was to merely him asking him about board. dreams and they look like he had seen a ghost. <laughs> If I had to describe Talix with one word, it would definitely be puppy. Oh boy. <laughs> a puppy carrying the heavy say puppy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Talix seems capable, but I would not let him astray. Let us go. Uh, we know the baths are, right? Yeah. Like around the back. Okay, yeah. Uh, this like you said, like a, it's like a wood fence that kind of holds it in, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is it like like to like prevent like outside viewership, or is it just like to hold the water in? Uh, it's not tall enough to stop most people from just peeking over. Okay. Yeah, I guess we'll walk around the back. <laughs> Although it is considered rude. <laughs> I I don't know if 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 I've. Uh... If I roleplay it appropriately, but rude is not exactly a concept that Pontifex <laughs> is careful about. It doesn't seem a part of Nazardoran culture. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I think oh, yeah. we'll just like straight up walk around the back <laughs> into the bathing area. So Alex will just kind of notice you. Oh, uh, hello, Professor. Uh, hello. Uh, lost. Uh, no, I believe I will be passing. Uh, Tekka and myself are uh, off to see one of these Ezin. Um, we should not oh. be very long. No, oh, uh, Talix is going to stand up and, like, shake off and, like, run to the tells. No, no, I'm coming <laughs> with you. 
Oh, I haven't had many chances to meet with one of these. I mean, I have, but, uh, well, they're always, uh, interesting. <laughs> yes, well, uh, Brooke, uh, he's like looking around. Uh, where is Pip? Oh. Oh. Oh, he went to the river, right? Was... Yeah, he said he was going to base in the river. Oh, well, okay. He, say if, uh, it, he pointed at it. If he is accounted for on your end, then uh, uh, whatever. He can handle himself. I. Can he? Probably. Uh, I watch what he did with those little stones. I imagine if he runs into any kind of trouble. <laughs> well, if you go to the Ezin, might as well take a look at the river and see if he's still there, right? Sure. Well, yeah, uh, let's, let's stay around. Uh, do you need me, or can I stay in this place? No, 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 of course. Uh, feel free to rest and recover. Take your time. We're in no rush. We'll All meet right. you back here, then. And he dives back down into the bath. <laughs> Cannonball. <laughs> sure. It's a pretty big ass cannonball. Yeah. Is Brooke like a 200 pound, like, <laughs> big <Yes>. dude? <laughs> Over yeah. seven feet tall. Oh, yeah, yeah, probably there's a lot no more water in the bath anymore. <laughs> <after> the <laughs> well, small tsunami washes over the tavern. It's okay. I am done bathing. I have I have bathed all of the water out of the, out of the bath. I believe that means my bath is complete. <laughs> uh, I guess he doesn't cannonball and just go back there. The belly flop. <laughs> That's the same outcome. <laughs> Just more hurtful. I find if you increase your surface area, it uh, tends to retain more of the water in the pool. <laughs> sure, you can try that, Professor. The more of a bloop, the more water will leave. The more of a smack, the less will leave. Uh -huh. You want optimal smacking. Okay, I'm um, frog, you well, know. Well, you're talking about that, I got fully dressed. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> is like talking at length on the logistics of the proper belly flop. Yeah, you can submit uh, your paper on this later. I expect okay, that. I'll have that, a, I'll have that in my recap. Creations. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you both should know Pip has not strayed from us these last days. This could be bad. I think he might be in trouble here. We are with many people. So, yes. Go to the river. Alright, I'll go look for him while you go for the Ezen. And he starts climbing back well, well, out. We can go. Oh. Sure. Let's, let's put go. Put back on his clothes. Or at least make sure he's okay. Okay. Yeah, you all, uh get dressed and you go around the, the, the bath outside the tavern, uh, the spot uh, in the river where, uh, well, you go to the river and you just look like left and right, uh, uh, Pip, are you within sight? Uh, Pip, Pip was hiding from that woman, so he, he was just sort of looking to, to see like where she went and, uh, you know, if he sees the other the others, he wouldn't try and hide from them. But uh, yeah, he he did he didn't like someone asking about his parents. So uh, she's yeah. not there right now. Um, the the rest of the group is basically where she was. Okay. Uh, did he go further down the river, or hmm. I start looking for tracks. Well, <laughs> at the same time, Pip will stealth towards them. <laughs> Look for tracks that aren't boot prints. Uh, Look for well, tiny feet. Everyone's passive perception is a 13, so roll stealth and beat that. Oh, I'm still looking for the tracks. I won't. I won't notice them. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I found him! I found him! <laughs> he went straight into the river. I've got to dive in after him. Add it to the net one counter. It's actually an 11. <laughs> what? 
Talix is already oh, do you have plus in the five? process of removing his clothes again. <laughs> uh, right as Talix is removing his shirt, uh, um, the rest of you uh, notice Pip sneaking up behind you, but almost at a time when he has almost completely reached you, just a few feet behind you. You, you hear, hear the him. sloshing of Pip's wet pants <laughs> <laughs> with every step. <laughs> and uh, oh. you, you hear Pip's voice uh, through Squeak. I was approached by a monster. <laughs> oh my. A monster. In, right in the middle of town. But they don't see Squeak, right? Right. Squeak's invisible. <laughs> <laughs> so you hear the voice from, like, the general direction of Pip. Mm -hmm. well, this I isn't the first time we've seen him go yeah, invisible. Yeah, so. at least has seen this before. I don't know if everyone has. I mean, he I turned invisible, seen. and then he went into the uh, into the pit before we feather fell. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Pip, where did it go? We may pursue it still. Did it go in the water here? Is that what I'm seeing? No. Wait. Oh, you were just sitting here, weren't you? <laughs> it asked me where my parents were. <laughs> it, it's it spoke. Speak. Is that a Lodarian something? <laughs> it was a bad woman. Oh. Oh, okay. yes. A monster indeed. She hurt you. No. Okay. Well, that's lucky. I just didn't want her around, okay? Well, that's okay. We can. We'll stay with you from now on. Sorry about. We'll pay more attention next time. If she appears again, I will chase her. No doubt. Good. I'll like offer my hand and hold it out. I was, I was looking for plants that I could sell to give Talix back his money when this lady came and ruined it. <laughs> oh. Well, that's very nice of you. Um, but we, well, <laughs> come to think of it, we do need to get some money together, don't we? Well, on the topic of money, uh, I was speaking to the innkeeper earlier, and uh, it seems that um, uh, her recommendation for the best way to make money was to just go and sell whatever we have at the market. But uh, before I left, she mentioned a local uh, uh, local cleric of the fox uh, and said that he was a little overwhelmed and uh, would enjoy the assistance of fellow clerics, and I count at least two of us. Well, that's wonderful. She's, uh, I heard the, she said his name was uh, Egon Hartbloom, I believe. As I would assume he's at the local chapel, so, you know, perhaps maybe after our uh, introduction with the Aizen, perhaps we go and check on Egon. Sure, let's add that to the list. I'm still holding my hand out, I'm, like looking at, I'll just like kind of awkwardly <laughs> fold it back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, we're all going together then. Brooke, I see you're here. Mm hmm. What's okay. going on? Well, okay. Uh, <laughs> Essen, and then the, uh, to the parish. Pip, here is a blanket. Get yourself dry. Aw. <laughs> Pip takes it and wipes down his legs. Well, let's get moving. Okay. So, uh, you don't know where to find uh, this uh, this person, nope. uh, but if, on the assumption that I think you would do that, if you check the uh, the Jamil journal, um, we oh. mentioned uh, the the as in the first place. Uh, uh, he does recall the general direction. And you poke around until you do see just um, this building with... Uh, it looks like a, one of the many houses in the area. Uh, but the doors are open. And there is a small sign uh, uh, just planted in the ground near the the, uh, the entrance that uh, says in Lurnan, in Anhanic, and in Ezenfair. Just the word doctor. Oh. 
Oh, there's a physician of sorts. Oh, yeah, that's pretty common. They're, uh... They seem to have a knack for it. Oh. He's a... Uh, no mentally simple occupation. Or at well, they're, uh, Well, they're at least very mentally... Uh, resolute. <laughs> well, maybe you'll see what, what I mean. I'm even more excited than before. You can see through the uh, open entryway, uh, there are a few... There's multiple beds in what would normally probably be sort of like the, the living room uh, of the house, and instead it's set up uh, uh, like... like a... Oh. Not the word hospital, but you know, just... just there's beds here and there's infirmary. a few people. In yes, thank you. Like an infirmary. Yeah. Uh, there's a few beds here. Uh, two of them currently occupied. And um, your your gazes are immediately drawn to the figure that's uh, uh, standing next to one of these beds. Uh, because of how uh, just unusual to most of you uh, this is uh, of a sight. Uh, um, the figure is cloaked and large and hunched over the bed um, and it's wearing these wide saggy robes um, that seem like they would get in the way of of his job it's currently facing away from you and uh, uh, the figure is bandaging uh, an arm of the person on the bed Uh, I think that Pip's, like, immediate gut reaction is to just run up and hug this figure. <laughs> <gasps> okay. Uh, yeah, Pip. Pip does that, just beelines towards the, the cloaked figure and uh, gives him a hug. And uh, instead of, uh, instead of uh, making this person jump in surprise, uh, um, all that this Ezin does is to uh, slowly finish bandaging the arm and the secures it into place and then begins to look around and all of his all of their movements are just very slow uh, like like there is a <coughs> absolutely no rush in what they're doing and uh, Pip, you look up uh, and uh, you're unable to make eye contact not that you expected to do so because uh, there is this person is wearing a red mask that fully covers their face, and despite there being two holes to see through, um, all that you can find be be behind them is this impenetrable shadow. Um, I, I think Pip would even ha uh, speak through Squeak in this instance, um, and just say, Of! Of! It's, it's me! It's... Of! People would recognize uh, uh, that the mask looks different from uh, uh, the one the person the Pip knows. You're and not... Pip would just back away. So he was speaking in Ezenfar just now. Is that is that what was going on? Mm, no. Oh. Okay. Uh. Oh, there's, uh, there's one of these in almost every town here, so... But, uh, maybe we can look for this elf of yours. Also... Sorry, we never considered asking. It's, it's, uh, it's pronounced oof. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's okay, we've only ever had it in writing. He's a good egg. I had two choices. Of <laughs> or... <laughs> <laughs> It is was spelled. the Ooplu not a hint? Everything oh, is an Ooplu. Ooplu was, spelled... was spelled with O's. Everything is always an Oo. <laughs> Different <laughs> languages. So Ooplus and Benunus. Well, Darians literally can't say uh. They can't make the noise. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever heard Tekka say the sound? <laughs> who are you? Oh, <laughs> uh, well... If we uh, replace all of the vowels in our names with ooh, then I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh no! 
Um, Tekka approaches and speaks in Plernan. We are a group of five. Are we intruding? The Ezen replies in this, uh, um, this voice uh, not only does do they speak uh, slowly, but it's also it's a soft voice that really treads the line uh, between a woman's and a man's. Um, and uh, uh, they reply in uh, in Plurna, in, um, in a in a in a Plurna that's pretty much accent free. Is any of you? Injured. Shake my head. Uh, nope. Talix just kind of looking at Tekka like, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> Is any of you sick? We uh, nope. were harmed before, but are well now. Our ill is of curiosity. Can you answer questions? I will answer questions while I work. And the Ezen turns around and uh, gets back to uh, bandaging up this person. Have any of your patrons mentioned unusual dreams? Nobody told me they didn't change your music. Ah, how could you? I didn't know you were trying to. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me let me check something real quick. Uh, the Ezen replies, I have received no report of any unusual dreams. Hmm. Understood. Take a look back at the group. Do you uh, have questions? Talix isn't, isn't going to ask anything, but he will just kind of look. So he's working on one person bandaging them right now. What, like, are there other people in this room? What is the state of the person he's working on? Mm -hmm. What are the state of the others? Like, that has have people been like? Does it look like there's been a battle or something? Or uh, so the person is bandaging up. It looks like uh, you can see the blood seeping through the bandages. Uh, so, although like that's pretty much all you can tell, especially from this angle because the, the Ezen is sort of like in the way uh, compared to you and where the bad is. Uh, the other person is sleeping and uh, uh, the they have their their uh, one of their legs uh, in uh, the word escapes me right now, it's broken and it's like held in place I with guess. yes, a cast. Okay. So it doesn't look too unusual. Alright, carry on. Um, this, uh, this Ezen that we're looking at, um, do they have Vox that are coming through their, uh, through their mask? Yes. Uh, they have two on, on the chin, the sort of, like, face, uh, uh opposite from one another. And the mask it... has holes that lets them poke through. Right. And the mask is red. Are the Vox of any particular color? They're black. Okay. Uh, I do have a question, or 12. Uh, <laughs> these, uh, these people that are injured, uh, would you like any help? Are you doctors? Uh, 
academically speaking, yes, in several cases, but uh, <laughs> a physician, no. Oh, we're uh, clerics. Not a physician, but yes. As my friend here said, we are, uh, we are clerics. We uh, have the divine gifts of being able to heal wounds. The Ezen just points at the person with a broken leg and says nothing. Uh, I, I can I can do it if you want. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I don't know. I'll walk up and cast Cure Wounds and see what happens. Okay. Uh, could you could you uh, roll? Yes, I will. Uh, oh yeah, I will lay. I'll get out my my symbol, that piece of amber, my focus rather, and uh, lay my hands on the leg and say a little prayer. And oh, you do have inspiration. Can I use it? I think you can only use it on D twenty. Yeah. Oh, oh, that was a, that was a, okay. I thought that was a good medicine check. Oh, no, I I was just rolling for the hit points. I assume that's what you wanted. Mm Mm-hmm. Just one moment. Okay. Uh, you rolled a five, yeah? Yeah. Although the... As you perform your spell, and, uh, what is, what... Do you have any, like, visual clue uh, to your magic? Like, is there any light um, or, or such things? Yeah, well, I haven't thought about it too much. Could we... I mean, I don't know how carried away you want me to go with it. Could we say that, like, maybe... Oh, maybe little woody stems uh, wrap around the affected area and... Blossom leaves, maybe even, and then wither away, and the area underneath is healed afterwards. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. that's beautiful. Um, and although you see this this effect taking place, the fact that the person is currently sleeping and there is uh, the leg is fully covered, uh, you don't really see the effect, like whether the the spell took hold and achieved anything. I I don't see whether because hmm. the leg is like the the, the leg is, uh, oh. is held in place. You know, you don't see. Oh if, like, right, right. Well, you yeah. can't see the actual um, injury. I'll well, let me look at this person um, <laughs> that I just cast the spell on without consulting first. <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, are you waking him up? <laughs> Uh, I, I suppose if they slept through it, I will just uh, let it go and just... Do they seem okay. to be breathing easier or anything? Uh, yeah, uh, so this, this is a human man, kind of a pretty pretty muscular uh, and, uh, and, and tanned. Um, the sleep he was in seemed to be um, surprisingly uh, peaceful. Um, and you uh, roll, a, roll a medicine check. All right. Which is an AD twenty. Oh, oh wow. I've, got, I've got two numbers. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, this rules. isn't uh, this isn't the first time you've done something like this. Uh, uh, of course, a lot of uh, a lot of your job as a priest of Akhenaten is uh, mainly to tend to to the sick and the injured. Um, so even though you, you don't see like the, the actual uh, you, you can't see what's wrong with the leg besides like just seeing what's been done to it to hold it in place uh, you do pick up on just these subtle clues like the breathing getting a little bit uh, uh, a little bit deeper and a little bit slower and uh, just some some twitches in his uh, in his toes uh, um, it seems like whatever might have been wrong with him uh, is uh, most likely gone and you have, you have faith in Vakanath and in your own magic. You have no reason to believe that this didn't, didn't work out. 
Oh, right. I probably should have detected disease first to see if that was... <laughs> I just assumed it was just a, a physical injury. But... Oh, well, it is what it is. Well, I, th I think I've helped him feel a little better. Okay. That's that. <laughs> kind of shuffle back to the rest of the party. Right there. Uh... If you don't mind, uh, Mr. Um, Ezen, uh, do you have a name? Anp. Anp, okay. Uh, these, uh, this place, these people, uh, are these just work-related injuries, or is there some something going on? We are travelers, and we are fresh to this place as of this day, so if there are any problems with the town, we would seek to leave it better than when we found it. Their scaffolding broke. Oh. Uh, is this a common occurrence? Is the sort of problem with the materials, or is this more of an accident? Not common. Is he? Well, uh, was this on the new construction on the southeast side of the town? Yes. I see. If you'd like, I could tend, I could see to the southern one too. Still got a bit of energy left. Amp finishes, <clears throat> Amp finishes what they're doing and then take a step back. Oh, okay then. Uh, same deal. Well, while my friend is uh, taking some of the labor off your hands, um, do you perhaps know the name of Jemuel Fleetfoot? One moment. Sure. Okay. Uh, and as as Talix works his magic, um, and and watches it happen, uh, they, they they don't turn back to face Pontifex during the conversation, so they're facing exactly opposite from you. Uh, as they reply, yes. Um, were you just minor acquaintances, or was there some form of professional capacity? Could you tell us about him? He passed through here a long while ago. I see. Did he make mention of anything he was working on, or where he was going? No. Um, Amp passes a finger uh, on the arm that he just <clears throat> that he just bandaged, uh, and then they begin to undo the wrapping. Wait, wait um, on, on their own arm? On the arm that Talix just healed. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Uh. Glad to be of service. Um, you know, uh, we're actually looking for work, all of us. If there's anything we could do to help you or maybe help this town. As Amp is still working on undoing the, the bandage that they just put on a few minutes ago, um, they say... Your magic is useful. Would you like to stay? Well, sure, for a... Uh, for a while. Um... What else do you need help with? Well... 
there are always people who need help. Oh, you mean... You mean for the long, the long haul? For as long as I exist. Oh. Uh, well, we'll be in town for a little bit. Uh, I can come back by tomorrow and see if anything's changed in the situation. I'm always happy to help. Alp finishes removing the bandage, and uh, uh, although the, the bandages are soaked in blood, uh, there is not even a scar uh, on this arm. So you can you can see that uh, you completely got rid of that injury. And uh, Alp begins to dispose of the bandage and says nothing. Uh, Tekka, did you have something you were wishing to ask of this Ezen? Hmm. Or perhaps our friend? And he's gonna like peek in the book. The book doesn't have any new writing on it. And your time is valuable. I will be brief. And Tekka takes out the uh, moss that he gathered from the cave. Are any plants of this river, can it be used to heal injuries? That's the moss you got from the river, not the plants you got from the cave, right? No, it's the plants from the cave, yeah. From the cave? Mm hmm Okay. Um... Uh... Um, before Ant replies, they finish uh, pu uh, disposing of the bandages, and then they turn to approach you and look at what you're holding. And then they nod, and they, they try to uh, take it from you. Take it, and take a let's go. Okay, uh, they bring it uh, uh, on the on the opposite side of the building compared to the entrance, where you can see this table with uh, uh, a lot of. Um, is any of you proficient in uh, in? Uh, uh, okay, Brooke is. Oh. I'm just taking a quick look. Yeah, uh, it's just Brooke. So a lot of these things uh, are uh, items that you're familiar with. Um, items, uh, various bottles and ingredients that would be used to make uh, uh, various kinds of concoctions, uh, including, well, from context, uh, likely all things that are used to uh, to deal with uh, with injuries and, uh, and sicknesses. And uh, it's uh, all very organized. There's multiple shelves even hanging on the wall. Uh, and uh, Anp just places the moss that Tekka collected onto one of these pots on the shelf and then begins to just very slowly walk towards the desk and opens a drawer and then returns uh, uh, towards the rest of the group uh, uh, with uh, a small pouch uh, and places some coins uh, in Tekka's hand. Valuable, then. I hope it serves you and your patience. And Tekka will hand the pouch and the coins uh, to Talix. Oh, but I think at least part of this was for your contribution. Mm -hmm. uh, we should split this. You have helped us and helped them. This is for you. Thank you, Tekka. Okay. Um. 
Well, uh, thank you so much for your time. Uh, on. We will be back tomorrow. Is this okay? Yes. Good. And then Tekka will kind of nod to the group and start to walk out. All right. Well, this has been very enlightening. Uh, thank you for your time. And he'll give like a little bow. <clears throat> Brook follows the bow and then also heads out. Unput just slowly uh, raises a hand in a waving motion. Hmm. Oh. Alex will wave. The I hand is uh, gloved. You haven't seen a single square inch of this person's skin the entire time. When getting outside, do I see or spot any like banners or flags hanging around in the city? Or would I have seen any? Mm -hmm. Mainly looking for same colored ones. Yeah. Nice uh, nice Brook, you're... So far, at least on this half of the town, you have not seen such a thing. Alright. It's actually a... Well, it's kind of a good sign, at least, for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, real quick, Winter. Um, last time, whenever Pontifex and Talix passed through this place, um, and I talked to the individual about the Obsidian Eye. Um, I don't think I like got any actual information about the eye itself, but he would have definitely wondered like, what are its hours of operation? Like what? It, like what's like the the time that they are doing things there? Like that's something you would have asked. Yeah, like because he he would have you know broken from the conversation with like you know, I will I will be back later you know like i will return here and so he he'd be curious about like mm -hmm. is this a daytime place or a nighttime place because well, that seems Pontifex, pretty key pontifex would have learned that the obsidian eye is not uh, uh meant for for visitors to to be there uh, mm -hmm. it's a place where people work so he wouldn't have gotten like a a time okay Okay. Then he'll he'll work with that knowledge then. Hmm. I don't think he considers himself to be a visitor. Um <laughs> yeah. Uh Pip did come out with us, right? Yeah, Pip just sort of like left in kind of a slump. Mm. Aww. Uh, whenever we're outside, Talos is going to kind of like discreetly count the coins, see what we got. It's uh, uh, 20 gold pieces. What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Those uh, are kind of ballers, huh? <laughs> I insist we, we should share this. This is so much. With the wrapper money. They save a lot on laundry. <laughs> <laughs> Please, let's split this. That I is don't this. That is your choice, Talix. Taka, you you deserve this too. I'll Perhaps we could use them for uh, for drinks. If uh, people are uncomfortable receiving uh, monetary gifts, why not to uh, split them in the form of libations? That tavern keep was fairly helpful. They seem like they need the money. Well, I don't think we can spend this much on drinks. I think he looks over to Brooke. I think you may underestimate our companions. <laughs> 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 well, be that as may. For now, let's let's each carry our own funds. I'll hand out four gold to take a pit. Uh, well, actually, last Pip. Uh, Pip, do you tend to carry your own money, or...? Uh, Pip holds up three. Three fingers. Well, no, it, I'll give you the full amount. 
He yeah, shakes I'll his head. You. Okay, well, this other gold is... It'll go to you somehow. Sounds like a threat. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else will give the four gold, and I guess I'll take five for myself for now. Perhaps uh, a Some gold piece gold. is an ample exchange for a very interesting pebble. Hmm. Pip audibly gasps. Looks yeah, over towards the marketplace. We will find one, of, uh, and then maybe that gold piece will find its way to you. Uh, maybe in another form. Well, you have done to my will. What is your will now? Is it to purchase or to meet your contact? Well, as I, I said, I am in no hurry. We are near the market if there's anyone around at this time. Maybe we take a quick look. Yeah, we should definitely fill up on rations. Mm. And we were told that uh, the fastest way to make money is at the market. Uh, perhaps we do not have things of use at the moment, but perhaps there are people looking for things. And, you know, market stalls have a tendency to have some wear and tear. Perhaps we can assist with that, earn a little bit more coin. And they have information. That's true. There we go. All right. Okay. You cross the bridge, um, and uh, end up in this uh, this large area, the, the heart uh, of the settlement, uh, where a series of stands surround a large wooden stage. You can see plenty of food items for sale, including fresh produce, cheese, and meat. Uh, some of these stands display items like pots and plates, uh, and a few don't even have any items uh, for sale at all, though there are still people sitting behind their stalls. Um, this feels like a good, uh, a good moment to take a brief break. Brief break. Nice. Alright. Alright. So I'll see you here in 10 minutes. Woo! Okay. Woo. Be right back. Okay, right, guys, so group puddle. We're planning on holding the Ezin down and stripping them, right? <laughs> Wait, hold uh, on. Um <laughs> That's the plan, right? Like we like we gotta know. Like we gotta. <laughs> I have moral qualms. <laughs> it's, 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 it's in the pursuit of uh, the pursuit of knowledge. Curiosity, right? I mean you gotta uh, do what you gotta do. Is ill, I believe Taika said. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Alright. That's almost the same as us organized by height. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> Nothing. We're arranging ourselves by shoe quality. <laughs> but that also turned out to be pretty close to height. Shoe quality? Oh. Yeah, we've established that a character's uh, likelihood of asking questions is determined is proportionate to the quality of their shoes. <laughs> what? It's just yeah. one of those things you notice. <laughs> you don't get shoes like these without being rude and inquisitive. <laughs> okay. This is 400 years Are you about to start of back up? curiosity. Yeah. Let me, okay, let me. Hold on, don't start yet. Uh, <laughs> it's a little late. <laughs> still on break, still on break. So got a break screen up now. All right. And bloop. <laughs> Perfect. Why is Pip still in that tree? We're talking about happy places. Ah, uh, oh. I see. On the face of happy places on the stage, Pips is in a tree. Okay. Uh, so you're you're in the market area. Uh. <clears throat> tell me what you'd like to to look for. Can we just get a list of every single thing sold here? <laughs> okay, we're probably gonna. Rock. I'm gonna Talix is gonna be looking for Rock. food and a pen and ink because he'd be running kind of low. Um, 
I would say that Brooke is looking for bandages and uh, rations, mainly. Okay, that guy's looking. Hold on, hold on. Ration, rations, uh, a pen and ink. What else did Brooke say besides food? Bandages. Bandages. Okay. Um, uh, go ahead, Tekka. Uh, food and tools. What kind of tools? Mm, kind of like gardening tools, probably. Something in that direction. Okay. Someone uh, had a trowel. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember who it was, but someone mm -hmm. did. Yeah. 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 Of course, it's Talix. Yeah. He's got the whole tool shed on his back. Mm -hmm. Is Pepe looking for something? Rock. Rock. Okay, you're looking for the rock <laughs> then. Uh, what about Pontifex? Uh, Pontifex is ignoring the market entirely and is going straight for the book on the stage to check the bookings. Yeah, uh, in the stage, in fact, it's uh, uh, currently occupied. Uh, this stage is large enough that there are um, there are two men giving two separate speeches on each side, one on the left and one on the right, each to their own small crowd of about uh, uh, half a dozen people each. He's uh, um, listening intently to both sides at the same time. Simultaneously. <laughs> I feel Are like this having... is something he could do. Are they having a philosophy rap battle right now? <laughs> no, they're... Like, are, they, are the speeches related or are they independent? They're completely, they're completely separate. Like, if you look at the scale of this, this stage nice. is really, really big, you know? So, like, one person is on one end and one on the other, and the two speeches are really not, like, overlapping. Um, they're just far apart enough uh, that they're, they're, yeah, they're about to completely separate things. Uh, yeah, one he's of them... listening to both of them at the same time. I feel like yeah. Pontifex is the kind of guy that can read two books simultaneously. Oh, Jesus. Sure. So uh, I would like for you to uh, to appropriately voice act two people <laughs> talking over each other. <laughs> okay, well, while well, Pontifex does that, uh, the others are going shopping. Yeah, you're, you're leaving him there? Or is somebody yeah. else interested? Probably, okay. yeah. Yeah. Actually, Windsor, can I also use my uh, furbok magic to use detect magic around me to see if there like any yes, absolutely. doors that shows a lot of magic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me quickly check. So this this is your racial ability. Um, mm -hmm. You can cast attack magic uh, once you cast. Da, da, da. Okay, they do still take up your uh, your components, which in this case are verbal and somatic. All right. Okay. Yep. Is there any any uh like I asked the Jason before? Is there any visual effect when you do your magic? I mean, he did that in the cave already. But instead of having like a visible bubble around me, filled with magic, make it invisible so it, so the normal eye can't see it. Okay, I, I'd say for anyone capable of magic, uh, they will still feel like there's. Uh, well, not everyone, but some people, especially those who are uh, particularly attuned to the forces of magic, uh, Pontifex, for example, being one such person, they'd be able to tell that there's Other some kind of magical effect around attack you. Magic. Uh, well, for example, yeah. Uh, but otherwise, it is after you're done doing your actual casting, which does require you to like move your hands and say something. Uh, after that, there is no like visual. Uh, anything that shows that there's mm -hmm. like a spell going on right now. There's no like light uh, or any such things. Uh, and then you begin poking around. So for those of you who are looking for food, there's going to be plenty. A lot of it is just uh, uh, it's fresh vegetables and fruits uh, and uh, uh, there's even fresh milk and a lot of cheese products. Uh, but uh, as for like you, you do have to like go from stand to stand and pick the kinds of food that, that would uh, uh, last for a long time if you're trying to like assemble some rations. Um, so it's it's going to take just a, like a little bit of shopping to find things like nuts uh, and uh, sausages and other things that would, that would last for a while, the cheese, um, some kinds, the hard ones you can take with you. Uh, 
that's what yeah, Talix mean. will try to like scrounge together probably like five days worth of rations, and then it'll maybe buy a little something extra to snack on, like some soft cheese or something. Okay. Uh, so as you, as you go through this process, you can spend the, your um, the amount of money per rations that would be as by the player sandbox. So that's going to be five silver each. For each Can I also buy some a snack to share with Pip? I think Talix is gonna to want to try to like stick by close by Pip while we're shopping. Yeah, you can spend an extra silver piece for something to snack on. Are you looking for something in particular? Uh, what was the candy actually? Ooh, candy. Anything sweet? Unfortunately, uh, I'll, there is this kind of like practicality to Nesridora and also its colony uh, where comfort foods are lacking. Okay, uh, just some cheese then. Okay, are you able to get some, some cheese now? Like, a meal's worth, but uh, something to, to eat while you shop uh, for, for copper. Does Pip uh, um, take it? Uh, what kind of cheese is it? Uh, I'd probably look for something akin to like Munster cheese or something, like something not too strong. I think I think Pip would would happily partake in some cheese. Okay, as you um during the purchase of the cheese, that's when you get to to learn a little bit uh, about the uh, where this cheese comes from and like uh, all the cheese that this person is currently selling. Yet you um, hear about uh, uh, the fact that uh, there is these special breeds of cows that are uh, unique to this to this colony. Um, and so the cheese that you find here, you're not going to find anywhere else. Inside check. Yeah. <laughs> is it really unique to this colony? Could be. <laughs> I trust implicitly. <laughs> <I> mean, maybe. <laughs> oh, it's very good. Pip pops you one like in his mouth and he doesn't like keeps his mouth open while he chews. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Alex kind of smiles. Yeah, I'll try to stick by Pip while we do the shopping. Anyway. Brooke, in your search for bandages, uh, um, as you poke around and you don't really see anything, you try asking around, uh, a few people just direct you to the local doctor that you <laughs> were just <laughs> at. God damn it. <laughs> 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 well, I'll have to make stop there later again. <laughs> Well, um, Tali said committed on coming back the, the following morning. Oh, true, um, true, true. Or you can go today, but if yeah. you like. Uh, uh, there is, How much there did is you say again stop. the reference were? Five silver? Yeah, uh, five silver each. per day. For one day? All right. Mm -hmm. All good. Uh, say eight. Mm, Tekka, um, uh -huh. if uh, you are looking for tools for gardening and such, there is actually a lot of things here um, that look like uh, farmer's equipment, uh, and you can find some, uh, um, like wh whatever specific tools you might be looking for that help with gardening, there is going to be uh, an assortment of them available for purchase. There's a lot of uh, 
hand carved things that are made of wood and others that are uh, part also metal. Uh, yes, I think Tekka would look for a metal knife, a saw, and potentially a glass jar. glass jar you'll find one that uh, could contain about uh, half a liter worth of uh, liquid mm -hmm. that is for sale for two gold pieces is the glass clean. like clean or is it like visibly yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, um it's completely transparent okay the knife, you will find one, uh, um, it's bigger than a knife that you would use for, uh, like, eating, uh, sort of like a big bread knife, uh, uh, for one gold. And, uh, uh you'll end up eventually locating this large, uh, uh saw that probably wouldn't even fit in your backpack uh, uh, you'd, you'd have to s find some way to like tie it to the outside of it sort of like your rope in your bedroll uh, that is available for 10 gold 10 gold oh, oh okay <laughs> hmm. it's like a handsaw right yeah uh Tekka I think would like start inspecting uh, the handsaw and can I roll to look for like imperfections so I could like try to lower the value <laughs> the cost are you trying to like haggle it down basically uh, yeah by finding mm -hmm. like flaws uh, in it yeah absolutely yep. uh, that, that that um that will be a persuasion well it's uh, kind of both, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like both like investigation and persuasion. You could pick hey. one. Whichever one well, you like. Well, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> so. <laughs> the person is not going to, to bulge on the, on the price. It's... Take it or leave it. Hmm. Tekka will purchase all three. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> uh, Talix, as you're on your search for for uh, some kind of uh, pen, some kind of quill, uh, ink, perhaps even papers, there is one stand that, that uh, catches your eyes. It's uh, covered in papers and some books uh, and the uh the person behind it uh, uh was somebody that you had seen actually like by now would be about uh, an hour or two earlier uh when you had uh, first reached uh, the the settlement uh, and it's, uh, it stands stands out because it's just <clears throat> just so eye-catching uh, an owl folk with heart-shaped uh, <laughs> white face uh, and uh, light brown plumage and uh, this person is currently uh, asleep on the pile of papers uh, <laughs> on the table. Uh, Pip, you mind if we uh, take a look over here? Mm -mm. Pip, do you read? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, maybe we can find something interesting for you to well, let's see. Uh, yeah. I'll very excitedly approach. Okay. And, like, just kind of gently... <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah, ah! The owl the folk just jumps up from, from the chair, drops a few of the papers around, uh, then begins oh. to... 
to, to, to pick up the things he scattered and says, Oh, oh, I'm, oh I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, I'm, I didn't mean to startle you. I'm sorry. Uh, I just didn't quite know how to get your attention. Um, well, we're, uh, my young friend here and I, uh, we're both readers. We were interested in seeing what she had. Oh, 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 uh, so sorry, so sorry. Uh, these these bo these books are not not for for sale. Oh, uh, well, is this like a library? Can we rent them? Um, you could, you could, you could if if you spoke uh, these these languages. Books are really more for 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 me, uh, for studying, for learning. <laughs> oh, uh, you're a student. Uh, it, yes, yes, Ooh, in a way. <laughs> Sorry, I just can't get over this. Oh, oh so cute. I think Pip um, is just like, his mouth is just sort of wide, like, thinking back to the owls that he has spoken to before that were just, you know, owls. <laughs> oh, there's a person owl. And Pip is just having a hard time with that. Just for um, <laughs> so the 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 uh, for for Pip who would have like, just never seen a person like this before. This looks like just a really big owl with human-like proportions. Uh, this person doesn't even have hands. The arms are just wings, and uh, it's very clumsy. Like, the, the, the way that, that the, the way that he's picking up the, the papers, uh, and even collecting some of his own feathers that have fallen to the ground in the chaos, uh, it's, it's, um, like most of them are still falling back down even after he picks them up. Um, I think, uh, I think Pip would pick up one of the feathers and then reach down into the, his pouch and fish out uh, a few copper pieces and put them on the table. <laughs> How many copper pieces? Three. <laughs> uh, as uh, the owl folk is uh, is a uh, um trying his best to put things back onto the table. Uh, he notices Pip putting some coppers uh, on it and doesn't seem to quite uh, understand why he's doing that. Maybe he didn't even see like him taking some uh, one of the feathers and he just says, oh no, 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 no. Like, like, like I said, like I said, uh, the, the books are not for sale. Uh, Telex is, by the way, trying to help this person. Uh Okay, yeah, with with your help, uh, everything is just done a lot a lot faster, and everything is back a bit uh, a bit in a in a disordered manner, but everything is back on the table. Oh well, uh, well, I suppose primarily I, I need a pen and maybe some ink and maybe some paper, depending on the price. <laughs> oh 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 um, I I do I do have some. Uh, we 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 can we can um, uh, this one this one. He, the, he reaches and he just he pushes uh, an ink bottle towards you, uh, with like one side of the wing, and then um, he's going to eventually manage to put together some blank papers, uh, two bottles of ink, and some proper quills in front of you. Can I get a? While this is happening, uh, can I like quickly get an idea for what sorts of books there are around? Uh, what? yes. In fact, these are things that you're very familiar with, is it's all about the languages of Ladaria. Oh. Some, uh, some books are like, uh, speak about the languages and peoples of Ladaria, and some are just straight up in, uh, you can see some of them being in Itarian, and others that you, uh, cannot read. Talix is gonna just, like, grin from ear to ear, and just uh, kind of coyly say, well, it's a very interesting collection you have here in Itarn. Oh, oh, um, yes, yes, it is, um, it is something I have studied here. 
Talix was hoping for more of a reaction. <laughs> that was... that was the reaction. Yeah. I was speaking in Itaran now, though, right? Yeah. All right. He replies. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He replies back like that, and it's and it's fluent. Hmm. You know, I was uh, I was a big part of helping the church learn these languages. Well, this language in particular. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wait, you were? Who? Who? Who are you? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll extend my hand. Talix Moyer? I'm with the, uh, I, I work for the Jade Council. Well, the owl folk gasps a little, and he reaches forward with his, his two wings in what is just this messy handshake, and he says, Talix Moyer! Talix Moyer! I know you! I know you! Uh, Talix is like, jaw drops. <laughs> You, you know me. Yes, 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 yes. I, I have studied your work, your work. It is thanks to you, thanks to you, uh, that a lot, uh, all this progress on the Italian dialects, th thanks to you. Oh, well, oh my. I've never met anyone outside of, well, a few, of my circle of a few priests, I suppose. But you're not with the church, are you? Or are you? Um, um, n not not a priest of the church, but uh, paid by them. Yes. Oh, we've so we're co-workers all this time. I had no idea. Oh, oh, goodness! Ah, how amazing, <laughs> amazing, wonderful to meet you here. Indeed. Uh, well, this is a stroke of fantastic luck. Uh, oh my, um... What, what other, what other languages do you speak? Uh, I'll just kind of cycle through them all. I can speak two Aetherian <laughs> dialects, as in fair, uh, a little splash of Yavel, and as for plural languages, I'm fluid in Anhanic, Zvard, Galatan, Boromian, and Sylvan, and currently working on my Draconic. Oh my goodness. Well, you are... Very impressive. Ooh, no, not at all. It is just my job. I mean, I've been working on some of the other languages here, like Asenfar, but I've made no progress whatsoever, really. I've, uh, well, I've been preoccupied with other duties, but... Oh, such different languages. The fact that the history of Ladara and the history of Plurna ha have absolutely no connection up until, well, the discovery of Ladara does mean that the origin of languages are quite, quite different. Indeed. It's a proper puzzle. <laughs> oh my. Oh, uh, well, you you live here in, in this colony then? Ooh, no, not permanently. Are uh, you by any chance based out of uh, Aria? Oh, no, no. Uh, I, I simply go where I am needed. Though if I, if I were to, um, to have to call somewhere uh my home well that uh i suppose that would be chipton that is where i have lodgings what's that Ooh, uh i didn't uh, none of it came through what did you say oh uh i'm where where is that where is that colony, is it colony? um it's not somewhere that Talix has been, but um, you did get... Uh, Pontifex does have a pretty good map uh, that you've had plenty of chances to look at during this time. So, what, uh, so you do know that it's north of Alford. all of my money on. Yeah, it's north of Alford. Did I, uh, did oh, I miss okay. this person's name also? Was it said? Uh, neat as in no. said. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I gave my name, but he didn't give it back. Uh, Pip is going to say in Barumian, what is your name? And it was sort Tears of like, quake. yeah, come, <laughs> comes from like the Pip's g general direction, like on his shoulder, I imagine. Mm hmm. Okay, so it's, yeah. Um, mm, mm -hmm, mm. Okay. Um. Oof. <laughs> 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 Herbert <Close>. Hoover. <laughs> oh, oh, 
Oh, oh, so sorry, so sorry. My name is Boovan. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Boovan? Everything is an ooh in this place, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lovely. Well... Huh. Uh, if you ever need my services to, to, to get anything translated, uh, I am your owl. That's fantastic, I mean... Not that you would need my help, oh goodness, no, <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> well, uh, you seem to be the expert these days. <laughs> You've surpassed me, it seems. No, 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 no. Harry Tarn is perfect. Well, oh, um... Oh. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, 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 all thanks to your contributions. Huh. Well, if there's, is there any chance I might see you at the uh, temple here in town then? Oh well, uh, uh, I do stop by sometime. Occasionally, not that often. I should do it more often. Oh, it's, I'm sorry. It's just been so long since I've met a, uh, an associate. <laughs> Um, uh, this is... Well, uh, sorry, I'm off track, and I've got friends waiting for me right now, but... Ooh, uh, uh that is, is right, you wanted to, 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 to buy these? Oh, uh, you should, well, uh, the, the, the ink is expensive, uh, but, 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 uh, for, for, for somebody like you, somebody like you, uh, surely I can... Oh, well, I am a little short of money, but, but, but you could take... You could take this, you could take it, you could take it, and he starts pushing them towards you. Oh my, uh... Pip pushes the three copper pieces closer towards Boovan. <laughs> Please, uh... uh I, I only need the one vial of ink, really, for now, and... I don't want... I wouldn't want to take anything without fair compensation. Well, uh... <laughs> We're both, uh... Working under the same... Circumstances here, and I know it's... It's hard to survive. Um, well, oh, oh, awfully, awfully kind of you. Um, well, how much did I, did I buy this for? Oh, oh, goodness. Twelve? Let's make it five gold. Can I... I'm gonna inside check that. That seems like way too little. <laughs> okay. Um... Hmm. What do you think? Do I buy it? Like, what, what uh, do I what do I get from that? For a nine. Uh, for a nine, yeah. Well, that seems like an awfully good deal. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna take the one bottle of ink. I'm definitely not gonna take both of them, and only one pen. And I'll leave the paper. So I don't really need it that that badly. Well, I'll take I'll take one sheet of paper. How about that? Because I need to send one more extra okay. letter. Yeah. All right, five gold. Yeah. yeah, you paid five gold for everything. This. Uh, this was so gracious of you. <laughs> Not hooven. Um. I I feel like I owe you a favor here. Well, uh, <laughs> I I might pay you a visit here, uh, or I'll see you at the church sometime. I'll be in town for at least another full day. Oh, um, I I I, I will be in Cleon for for a lot longer than than, than a day, maybe, maybe two. Oh. Three? <laughs> well, maybe we could stay a bit longer. I'll see about that. Uh, it's been a pleasure. The, the, the pleasure. I mean, it has been a pleasure for me. Thank you. Talks is just kind of bewildered right now. Uh, okay. Uh, Boovan is uh, visibly just almost starstruck. Okay. Alex is probably uh, not to use it to that kind of. Uh, uh. Well, uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as Talos we walk away, reeling. 
<laughs> As we walk away, Pip holds up that large owl feather towards you. Huh. Oh, that is a beautiful specimen, but I feel a little funny about taking something that belongs to a thinking person. <laughs> hmm. You said you needed a a, a quilt. Oh, <laughs> that's for me. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I would really like to have this. I, I, I think paid I ask for good money for it. Oh. I'll tussle Pip's hair. And I'll take the take the feather. <laughs> All the little trinkets in Pip's hair jangle like wind shots. <laughs> and I'll add it to my book. After uh, casting a little preservation cantrip on it. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> well, I'm flavoring mending. To be... Oh. <laughs> it's not really that, that special. Uh, um, Pontifex. Oh, sorry. Were, yes. were you not done? Yeah, no, I'm done. Okay. Uh, Pontifex, the, the two uh, speeches taking place on the two sides of the stage. Um, one. Yeah. Um, it's the first one that caught your attention because it seemed to to you, you noticed right away that it was about the astral bodies and uh, the stars and the movement of the planes. So you paid a bit of attention, and uh, the main focus of that uh, sort of uh, lecture was about uh, something that the person calls, uh, or uh, seems to have called, uh, the uh, the antelope, uh, which is a second sun that appears occasionally around Lidaria. Um, this is something that you personally would not have seen doing your stay here, but uh, uh, for, the, for the rest of the party. Uh, they, you're not here, but I'm giving you this information. There would have been uh, sometimes days where uh, the days were exceptionally longer, and sometimes you could even see a second sun, and sometimes it would even pass uh, uh, during the night, making for uh, like a, a night that was as bright as the day. Um, it is pretty rare. It happens every few years, but uh, some of you would have seen it. And uh, Pontifex, that's what, that's what this person is calling the antelope, has called the antelope the second son, um, named uh, uh, because of the, the lion god of Plurna, who uh, one, of its me one of the stories about the lion is that the lion was so vain that he once tried to eat the sun. And so they named it the second son after uh, something that a lion would chase. Um, so the discussion uh -huh. is mainly on that, uh, while on the other side there's something completely different, and it's not uh, even a, a, a lecture like it's happening on the left side of the stage. On the right side, it's more of a, of a, it, it, it's a back and forth between the person on the stage who's sitting just uh, down uh, on the edge and the people who are listening to him. So it's more of a conversation, and uh, hmm. this this animated discussion is about the properties of certain plants that are uh, grown. Uh, in and around Cleon, uh, that uh, they're aquatic ferns uh, that are mainly used uh, for uh, feeding cattle, and uh, they're talking. It's it's a, it's a very like it's a conversation. that seems to be very much about like farmers and uh, um, just about how uh, where those plant plants grow, what makes them grow better, how much shade they should have, uh, and that kind of stuff. He's joining in on that conversation. Okay. Uh. Uh, excuse me, if you're uh, open for more questions, uh, this farm, uh, outside of its use for cattle and livestock, are there any uh, medicinal uses? Um, there are some whispers in in, uh, in the like small, tiny crowd uh, around the stage as, as you join in, and you can tell that some of them are commenting on your race, uh, but they're doing so in like a... Um, Hmm, how do I put this? Can you roll an insight check? Insight? Yes. Sure. Okay, it's a kind of attention, uh, uh, it's exactly the kind of attention normally a Pontifex would attract in Azredora, where people know exactly what you are, 
uh, it's just very rare uh, to see somebody like you. So there, there is a bit of attention on you right now, uh, but it's uh, it's it's polite. Nobody is like staring. Uh, and uh, the the man on the oh, stage. Sorry, says, I did not mean to interrupt. If it is not appropriate, I am. Oh, no, 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 no! Please. Um, I'm, I welcome questions, of course. Uh, as for properties, uh, this. Uh, not in particular. Uh, this this plant is uh, particularly rich in protein. It makes it uh, really, really good uh, as as feeding. And humans and uh, people, humankind can eat can eat it as well. Should be cooked first, but um, nothing of the medicinal sort. Okay, so this is a nutritious fern, and uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you use this for livestock purposes. Uh, what uh, is it easier than uh, the traditional wheat or? It's uh, uh, it's ideal reason. for the it's ideal for the area uh, where Kalen has been built. Uh, uh, it grows on since it grows on water and everything here is uh, well, uh, a lot of the terrain is covered in water. That's uh, particularly efficient. Right, that would make sense. Uh, do these things uh, do they propagate via seeds or are they more of a root? How, how does it? Uh, how do you make more of it? Now that uh, is. An excellent question, and it is currently being researched, because so far, uh, they take very, very little uh, care. Uh, as long as you uh, place a few of them in a pond, you come back a few weeks later and it is fully covered. Uh, but the actual uh, the gestation of these things has never been observed? It is currently being researched. Uh, by who? If you don't mind my asking. How long are you gonna take this? <laughs> I, I'm getting somewhere with it. Okay, okay, okay. Because otherwise, I was gonna say that this was gonna be like your entire time. No, um, no, no. I'm not. I'm not trying to like waste session time. <laughs> I, I got somewhere I'm going with this. Okay. Um, one of the people in the crowd uh, sort of like lifts her hand. Mainly me. Ah. Uh, and what does she look like? Uh, this it, person... Like, more racially. Yeah, yeah, uh, this is a female dwarf. Okay. I I know a little something about female dwarfs in, in particular. Um, is, is she on the older end or the younger end? Older. Okay. So, uh, uh, you are the one that, uh, that is doing the research on this. Uh, okay, I have a question. Um, my companions and myself are new to this region, as I'm sure you are all amply aware of, judging by the stairs. Uh, this herb, this foreign of yours, uh, is it in high demand? We do sell it, if that's what you're asking. Uh, for what kind of pricing, if you don't mind my asking? Do you raise animals? Or is this for, for human consumption? I haven't quite decided yet. Generally, we sell them by the cartload. Right. Uh, and what is uh, the average cost of a cart of this stuff? Fifteen gold pieces. I see. Fifteen gold pieces for a cart. And this is... Uh, a cart is ample to feed... A, a single cattle for how many days? Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Go on, plot the calculator. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, uh, I, I do not need all of these details at the moment. I am a little curious uh, about this. Uh, you said this is a native for to uh, Ladaria, yes? Yes. And uh, if someone else were to discover how these things uh, reproduce or propagate, would there be some form of reward attached? Well... It does not have to be monetarily. It can be of any sort. Generally, this kind of uh, what, what I am planning on doing is on uh, uh, publishing my findings afterwards. Uh, if you mean to contribute, uh, your name would be included. This is exactly what I was hoping to hear. 
Uh, you live here, yes? In this town of Cleon? And who might be asking all of these personal questions? Uh, I am a Pontifex Vas Dalus Alinach. Um, I am a professor from Nazirudora. I currently reside in Vosil, but... Uh, one of the people in, in the crowd uh, comments. Oh, uh, I know him. I, uh, in Sagreta, right? That's where you were te teaching? What? What did he say? Uh, Sagreta, the capital of Nezredora. Oh, sure. Uh, sure, if uh, memory serves, sure. Uh, Matt does not know the name of the place, but Pontifex, of course, <laughs> knows. Um, I have it documented right here in my book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that person comes up to shake your, your hand. And also, it is sure. in our Discord. I did give it to you. You asked for it. Oh, okay, okay. No <laughs> I'm just... You're making my job difficult, so I'm taking a shot here where I can. <laughs> this is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Well, okay, in, uh, in the event that I discover this, uh, I would hope to have some way of finding you. Um, I well, seem to be here in Ladaria for a relatively long amount of time. Well, working alongside a professor would be would be absolutely wonderful. Uh, I am Kayara, by the way. And she also shakes her hand. It is a pleasure, uh, Kayara. Uh, Okay, that is uh, all I was asking. I am sorry to interrupt uh, the conversation here. I know I just kind of uh, shoehorned my way in, but uh, it's curious. The man over there is teaching about theology, and he's fairly accurate. If you um, want to keep on talking with them, like, you know, for as long as the rest yeah, of the no, party is taken up. Uh... No, that's all that, uh, that he was really interested in. Yeah, the theology thing was, was great, but he's heard all that a thousand times over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he's he's interested in more native things and about um, about a plant that people have questions about. Well, the, the, he loves finding things that have the questions. teaching about the second son is about something that happens in Lidaria. Right. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, then I Got suppose it. the group is eventually going to get together after this? Um, and he's probably signed his name into the book at some point. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, there is uh, the the uh, left side of the stage is going to be free in an hour. In less than an hour. Wonderful. Winter, would I have found anything with detect magic? Ooh, right, right, right. Um, okay, let me quickly check. Yes! There is one stand um, <clears throat> where... A, a male dwarf sits behind it and he is busy of writing on a pile of parchment and nothing seems to really be for sale here uh, you don't see any like items uh, on the stand but as you're like coming by and you can sense some magic somewhere behind uh, the stand on the ground um, there is somebody who comes by and puts some money on, on on it and they have a bit of a conversation and then the dwarf gives him a different kind of money. So you understand the, uh, right away that there's some kind of like exchange here of currencies. Huh, okay. Interesting. Then I'd go back to the group. Okay, you're all together. Talus comes back, still, still grinning, kind of like, uh, kind of like dreamily, looking up. Talus will be riding that high for weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you gotten all you wanted, Talus? Oh, yes, and so much more. Uh, uh, oh, um, so we're all, we've, are we all done with the shopping then? More or less? So he shakes his head, no. Oh. <laughs> oh, we never got you that rock. All right. Investigation, any stats <laughs> with rocks. Yeah. 
Speedrun. Run <laughs> <laughs> with everyone fair now. Everyone makes it. We can be here in five minutes. <laughs> everyone roll an investigation dice. check. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting to roll an investigation for so long. <laughs> He's so what? What? He's so what? Wait, what? You got advantage? That's a maximum! No, that's not an advantage. I have a, a d20 and a d4. And a d4 that goes on it, and I roll max on everything. Oh my Holy god! Holy crap! Holy moly. Let me tell you, Pip. Magic what kind of rock is found? Did, did, you, did you add it to the counter? Uh, max 20! <laughs> Yeah, that's something so that only bot effects 30. can pull off. <laughs> I can only roll a 30 on investigation and dragon chest. And dragon chest, <laughs> that yeah. That is it. Wow. What? Bow. <laughs> Watch out, Brooke. One of these days, I'm a 30 your ass on that dragon chest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's like a godlike. It's like you win the game like, instantly. Yeah. Like, you can do anything with a 30. As long as there's a mate. rock. Yeah, so crazy thing, Pip. Yeah. I found this really cool rock, but on the way, I found the answers to the universe. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I took six minutes to get back. I was distracted. You understand? I, I just happened to unearth a five-pound diamond. <laughs> 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 Will that do? <laughs> <laughs> Is this sufficient? <laughs> Oh, oh. Hey, while I was out, I found another speaking Ladarian rat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, okay, hold on, hold on. I have something, I guess, <laughs> this is happening. Um, oh, okay. Oh. <sighs> Was not expecting this. <sighs> All right. <laughs> so, um, as you poke around, eventually, uh, there there comes a moment when when uh, Pontifex locates uh, something that is, um, ooh, what's the word? The kind of stone that you put on books to hold the pages down. Paperweight. 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 Yes, uh, a paperweight, and uh, it looks pretty. It looks like almost uh, 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 polished. Uh, it's just very. Uh, it, it's almost reflective, and it has a very beautiful, perfectly symmetrical kind of shape. And it's for sale uh, for two copper pieces. And Brooke, um, Brooke, you you sense magic coming from it, but um, you missed it this earlier somehow, and you're not really sure how. Mm. It was that like one tiny corner where your 30 foot radius didn't quite touch. <laughs> I mean, it, it was would like make sense right in the back. It. I w it would make sense that I missed it because it, the detect magic is only for 10 minutes. So I'm assuming. Oh, yeah, perhaps it was like there. right towards the end of that. Uh. Yeah. Uh, Before Pip hears but... any sort of price, he's already reaching down and grabbing some gold pieces uh, that he just <laughs> <Yes>. received. <laughs> oh, uh, I said I'd get this one for you. You know, for repayment for that other gold, plus that feather. And also the really? old lady be behind the stand immediately, like, mm -hmm. pushes back the gold pieces. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's, just, it's just three coppers. Ah. Oh, lucky, I just happen to have a few copper I need to get rid of. They're weighing down the corn purse. <laughs> Here you go. And um, she'll hand the pebble straight to, to Pip. Oh, Pip receives it so gratefully. <laughs> um, is it heavy? Oh, yes, hmm? Is it heavy? Does it have some heft to it? Um, well, it's... Mm, it's uh, So it's uh, nice and flat, you know, it's, it's uh, good for... It, it fills up almost like the entire palm of your hand. Um, so, but it weighs about what you would expect from it. Yes, it's a, it's a nice way to that. Would hold so like a sand dollar down. of tungsten. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, 
And uh, just the, super dense. Uh, the color is this pale gray with uh, dotted black spots and uh, uh, two white lines run across it and do not intersect. And somewhat reflective, you said, because mm -hmm. it's so polished? Yeah. Um, Pontifex happens to have a pair of lodestones. Uh, I'd probably want to check, is this rock magnetic? Okay. Uh, yeah. Because I have check, lodestone, uh, so I can, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if it's magnetic, it'll magnetize. Yeah, you, you take it and uh, you check for that. And you don't, <laughs> uh, uh, you don't uh, find that it is magnetic. Although as you're handling it, you, ca you happen to uh, flip it over. And you can see that it's painted on the side that was previously down. Uh, and there, it's a bunch of, <clears throat> it's a bunch of colorful um, circles with other concentric circles inside of them. Um, and it's very... The, the brush that must have been used to color these circles and the insides of them must have been incredibly thin. Very, some kind of very expensive brush that could get such minute details on the pebble. I see. Well, I hope uh, this is uh, adequate to your liking. Pip is just squealing. With delight. <laughs> That's a good find. Well, without taking care of... Uh, Taka, did you get food for yourself and everything? I should be fine, yes. Taka, do you need me to, you know, make any purchases on your behalf? Mm, I cannot think of anything. And you can see Tekka, like, carrying this huge handsaw. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, I guess you did get some things. Okay, good. I was, you know, I I think this colony might be the best place for uh, ragtag punch like ourselves. They're quite friendly here, aren't they? I'm going to look back to the owl. <laughs> the owl is falling back asleep. <laughs> mm. uh, quite trustworthy or at least trusting of the people around them it doesn't seem a... that theft is much of a problem here oh. wonderful people oh, it's even it better than I of home there. can we stay here for a bit longer depends on what you mean by a bit longer well you know uh, we can stay I'm about to be out of money, uh, but we got work, and, uh, you know, it's friendly people. Maybe we stay around and try to get word on our next step. I mean, I do have to get back to Ari at some point, but for now, I think I've got a way to write to them. To my church, uh, I mean. On the topic of writing, uh, did uh, in your Escapades, did you happen to find someone who's capable of getting a letter? I would still like to uh, write my mentor back in Fossil about uh, Jamuel here. Oh, uh, yes. Um, well, uh, I if... think if I if we go to the church, I can find someone, right? Okay, then uh, perhaps I will uh, reconvene with you there. I have a lecture to give in about 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, I don't want to miss that. Uh, I'll try to be quick. Oh, uh, it's probably not too much for you to worry about. It is all things that uh, I have likely talked your ear off at this point. It, uh, oh. It's about the little prism that I have and uh, this thing, and he'll hold the, the big like brass orb thing that he carries around. Oh, I'd be interested to see how everyone else takes it anyway. If we, maybe we'll learn something. Um, uh, Austin. Uh, as just re <clears throat> just real quick this would uh, these would be kind of patterns that would be on the bottom of the rock uh, as an example oh. and it's like filled out with circles like that whoa that's beautiful oh, whoa. and it's like the entire thing can i make like a retroactive arcana check to see if there's anything magical or chemical behind like the meaning of these or if it's just purely artistry yes absolutely I'll make one too, just for the heck of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, neither of you would identify these symbols as having anything to do with magic. Okay. It looks pretty. Uh, if anything, Pontifex would have been exposed to some kind of like artsy things from from Kosia that would be that could possibly match. They are just uh, frivolous, pointless designs. Of course. <laughs> A very Kashian. <laughs> Slimy bastards. No. <laughs> no, he's the only slimy bastard around here being part frog. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> he was raised to not like Kashia. No, or yeah. Kashia. Kashia, yeah. No, I, I definitely like the idea of like everything that seems like a waste of time just gets called Kosian or whatever Kosian. Now I'm saying Kosian all the time. Pronounce it however you'd like. Nice. Teacher, I ask for some of your platform time. Uh, yes, of course. Thank you. I will. Uh, uh, how long are like the the like slots for? Is it like an hour slot or something? Up to two hours. Up to two hours. Okay. Then yeah, he'll. So I will. I uh, will make it brief. Um, how much of the time would you wish? You can of course have as much as you like. I will just, uh, you know, change my my lecture to accommodate. One minute. No. Oh, yes. Of course. No problem. Would you like to uh, do your part before or after? Before. That would be it. Then you are free to leave afterwards if you wish. Thank you. Well, I believe uh, that we are coming up then soon. In um, in about half an hour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about the others? How will you spend your time? I've just got to run to the church here and uh, see to send in this. Well, uh, Professor, do you have your letter with you? I can take it and see if we can get it sent together. Uh, no, I've not uh, written it yet. Oh, okay. Well, I'll ask him about it anyway and make sure there's a good way to get him sent. Sure. If uh, there is a way to get this sent to Vosil, that would be ideal. Um, while you're there, uh, ask if... Uh... If I can also send a secondary letter um, back to Nazaradora, to uh, the name of the place that Pontifex knows and Matt knows because Winter sent it to me in a message and I've still forgotten. The capital. Oh. Sagretta, yeah. Sagretta. Yeah. All right, yeah, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, thank you. So, but yeah, who is I guess going if to the, the time church? comes. No, oh, go for it. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know if we need... I don't want to take away from everyone else's time too much, but... Yeah, I'm, I just want to go... Uh, you know, meet, meet whoever is there and try to, like, get a feel for... any friends of the uh, Jade Alliance around here, and... if I have an avenue to get back in touch with my... With the local church in um, in Ar Aria, am I? Wait, is it Aria? Yeah. Is that the name of the town? Yeah, yeah, it's Aria. Okay. Um. Yeah. If I can get a letter sent there and from there to home, and then also <clears throat> see about Pontifex's letters as well. And maybe get, get a name and, like, get an idea, like... Who else is going to the church? I think Brooke would stay at this beach thing and listen. And Pip will stay with Brooke. Oh. Sounds good. Okay. So as you begin to make your way towards the eastern side of the settlement, uh, you move past some of the market stalls and you can see roughly in this area uh, that there is a small letter box that is uh, uh, red and uh, with the symbol 
of a feathered wing on it. And you would know that this is the symbol of the postal service that has been set up on Ledaria by colonists. Uh, and letters sent through this system can reach anywhere on the peninsula. And um, that also includes sending messages to people without uh, an address. There are some couriers that, that specialize in tracking down people um, all over the peninsula for uh, that kind of thing. Okay, so that can go to anywhere within the colonies. But not so much about sending something across the sea. If you want to send a letter that reaches Plurna, you will have to go to a proper postal office because you'll have to, um, you have to pay for that kind of service. Okay, well, I will, before I put anything in there, I will stop by the temple here. And I'm going to just try to glean any information on, again, if any of them are like, could be potential contacts. Yeah, yeah, we're going, we're going to do the whole uh, church thing together. We're okay. Not it. All right. Okay, so um, Talix goes uh, um, past the mailbox for the time being, and he, and he's going towards the uh, the temple. And like I said earlier, the double doors are uh, already open, and you can see inside um, that on both sides of this building stand uh, large marble statues representing each of the 14 Plurinon gods, with uh, a couple of chairs, some currently occupied, bl placed before each of them. And there's a variety of offerings as well. Uh, this wouldn't be particularly strange in Plurna, where uh, most temples generally feature the entire pantheon, even if they may uh, focus primarily on worshipping one god over the others. However, what's striking about this church is the presence of other statues, though far smaller and uh, made of cheaper materials. Unusually for a Plurnan temple, uh, you recognize one statue uh, of the wolf, the god of the elves, which is not recognized by the Jade Council. And another statue that you, rec you recognize right away, mostly because of what you've been up to lately, uh, will be a small wooden statue of the Lady of the Land. Huh. Is there anyone in here at all? Uh, there's, a, there's a few people praying in front of the shrine of the fox. Anyone in front of the Lady of the Land? Or Valkana, for not, that matter? Not the Lady of the of the Land. Uh, and while nobody's in front of Valkana's, there are a few offerings mm. in front of Valkana's. All right. Um, they're usually monetary donations, right? Or are yeah, they and, something Yeah, and else? other things. Is it but more they're like varied. A, okay, it's more like a shrine type thing. Right. Um, there's some coins, there's some food, beverages, just uh, um, all sorts of things. All right. Well, I guess if there's no priest to meet in here. I mean, it just doesn't look like there's a way into like a back room, like any kind yeah, of most office. Yeah, tem most temples like, like this, uh, uh, you will know that uh, um, there's always some kind of air that's, uh, that's for the priests in the back. And you can see from where you are uh, that there are two doors at the very end of the temple. Um, all the way in the back beyond, behind all of the shrines, one on the right, one on the left. I'll just give a faint knock at each of them. Okay, Talix goes for the one on the right first, and he gives a knock, and he hears uh, uh, some shuffling, something dropping on the other side, <clears throat> and uh, a male voice asks, uh, Yes, can I help you? Uh, excuse me, are you the local priest here? Uh, yeah, are you in need of something? Uh, no, but I hear you are. <laughs> I'm a I'm a cleric of Akanoth. Uh, I've come here maybe to help you. There's a long pause uh, that follows after you speak, and then you hear the, the screeching of a, of a chair being uh, pushed back across the floor, and very slow footsteps approaching the door that eventually opens just a little bit so that the person on the other side can see can see past it 
Um, you can see a you can see a man wearing a very vivid orange robes, and they're so long that they that they drag a little bit behind him. Um, he looks surprisingly young for for a human priest, even even younger than you. Um, yet his sunken eyes and messy hair add a few years to his appearance. As he uh, glances at you up and down, uh, you can see that he's a little sweaty, almost uh, almost unwell. And he, uh, he eventually says, "You came here to to see me." Uh. Well, sure. I mean, we really we were just passing through, but we well. Uh, me and some friends, yeah, uh, including another cleric, actually. We uh, we were actually kind of looking for work because we're a bit short on money, and we heard that that you needed some help over here. The door opens just a little bit wider. Uh, it creaks as it does. Uh, the man again is uh, looking at you, Talix, very, very intently uh he nervously rubs his hands um and then he says right um i'm egon egon hortbloom uh you are egon uh i'm talix talix Meyer. uh i'm actually here officially on uh jade jade council business uh do you have any affiliation with him after a brief pause, uh, the man nods. Oh, good. Uh, well, because I need a small favor as well, but, you know, when we can get to it, we can get to it. Uh, Egon uh, opens the door a little bit wider, and um, with with uh, trembling hands, he invites you to come in. Oh, okay. I'll come in. Close the door behind me. Uh, you find yourself in uh, an office of sorts. There's uh, shelves on both sides of the room and uh, uh, a desk in the middle with uh, a few chairs in front of it and one behind it. Um, Egon makes sure that the door is closed and then he, um, he drags himself behind the desk, lets himself fall uh, into his chair. Uh, there's a there's a lot of like there's an assortment of papers on his desk. Uh, he just puts his hands onto those papers, uh, and he he invites you to sit in front of the desk. Well, certainly, I'll sit down. So he makes a half-assed attempt to uh, just push aside some of the papers that are on the desk, and he addresses you and says, um, "What can I help you with?" Well, I need help uh, getting some letters sent back overseas. Though, for my own part, I I can just send a letter to, uh, well, send my letters uh, to Aria to my the church I normally work from here in the colonies, and they can sort things out from there. But I've got a friend here who needs to send a letter back overseas as well, and it's. I'm not exactly sure uh, who the recipient is, but I don't think they have any fil any affiliation with the church. So it's not the sort of thing I'm used used to dealing with for that. Uh, is there a good way to send letters overseas that you know of? An easy thing that we could do from here in town, maybe? Normally, in many colonies, there would be a... Uh... A, a postal office, but in, in the case of uh, of Cleon, uh, um, I actually happen to be in charge of the mail, of the mail so I, I could help you. Oh, perfect. Well, uh, that's good to hear. We can talk about that tomorrow, though. Um, you seem, if you don't mind me saying, uh, Oh, is there something going on? <laughs> Egon glances at the door, then down at his hands, and he's uh, twirling his fingers together. And uh, uh, 
I heard two people fell off a uh, scaffolding just the other day. Uh, it should be at the local doctor's place. Oh, that's right, yeah. So, uh, what brought you to Cleon? Well, uh, my mission isn't really here in Cleon, but we needed to kind of find a place to hunker down and resupply and hopefully make some money, so I can certainly help you here. That's... I'd be happy to. So you said you're here on Jade Council business. Who sent you? <clears throat> mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, let's see if I can find the name. I'm I'm probably do, doing this the hardest way. Ah, uh, you know I don't think I've ever asked you how to pronounce this. Gulborgach. <laughs> Borgach. Gulborgach. Gulborgach. You know, yeah, Gulborgach. It's, okay. it's good. Um, yeah, Egon, uh, Egon nods hearing the name, uh, um, looks down and he says, yeah, uh, right, the arch cleric of the fox, I work for her directly. Oh, right. I, I didn't even make that connection, but yes, yeah. And, uh, uh shifts uncomfortably in his chair, uh, now, completely avoiding your gaze, and he asks, Why did she send you here to, to check huh. on me? No, I'm I'm here. I need to be here in Ladaria. Uh I'm here for this. And I'll take him out I'll take out the uh, amulets. Well I'll just hold it up and show him. Uh Well Should I DM, should I tell him what I'm here to do? Oh, yeah, Lanfair then Ilgokoch, yeah. Well, it's uh, it's up to you if you want to tell him. Um, yeah, as long as it seems like the sort of thing I should do. I don't really know what my what my level of secrecy here is supposed to be. Uh, you were told that this was, this was supposed to be a secret mission. Like the the more people know about it, uh, the more likely it is to go wrong. Okay, then I probably, if I don't think I should, then I won't. Right, because Gulborgak said that you you, you should not share it. Uh, uh, you should not share right. this information with anyone unless it's uh, absolutely necessary. But ultimately, it's your call. Well, I'll just, I'll just kind of like. Uh, instinctively like straighten my amulets and say well i'm huh. no I'm, I'm here for my own mission but uh she doesn't know i'm here yet so i i haven't even had a chance to communicate with her but i'm about to send that report and she'll know my whereabouts and some other things that have happened so far uh anyways but I, as it were uh i'm here for now and i'm happy to help with whatever i can Right, well, in terms of help, there, there isn't really much in uh, Cleon, uh, besides those two injured men I mentioned earlier, who uh, could use some healing. Uh, I've already seen to that, actually. You have? Yeah, yeah. Uh... That's good. Uh, I don't really... Uh... I don't really need anything else from you. Oh, is that all you needed? Yeah, there, there's no issues in Cleon. <laughs> oh, well. Alright, I was, uh... Oh, I'm sorry, I... For some reason I was under the impression this might have been, might have been something bad happening. You're just, uh, what, you're just a little overworked what do you say here as well. well. What do you mean? Uh, sorry, it was just your mannerisms is all. I you seemed, uh... Nervous? You said you were um, going to report to, to the Jade Council soon, right? Well, yes, I I have to kind of let them know the state of things. Should I tell them something for you? Uh, if you could let them know that everything is 
good here in Cleon, or, uh, or rather, uh, uh, no need to mention me a at all in the first place. Okay, can I make, can I make an insight check, please? <laughs> Go for it. All right. No, no, sir, There's you may not. Something about this feels suspicious to me. I just want to. Is he trying to hide something? Uh, 17. 17, uh... Okay, are you keeping that? You do have inspiration. Well, I've got forever to, to use mine. Right, you did just, just do the summary. <laughs> um... Okay. So you're keeping the result? I'll wait till I need to help someone. Okay, okay, 17. Um... Talix is a kind of person who, um, he generally accepts what people tell him. Uh, he, he takes things a lot at, uh, at face value. Um, doesn't particularly put, like, that much thought into, like, people's mannerisms. Um, but I even if Talix is not, is not the most perceptive, this, this man is very obviously, uh, He's sweating a lot. He's very jittery. Um, hardly ever looks at you in the eye. Like, clearly there's right. something that he's worried about. Well, um, I'm sorry if I bothered you. Um, well, uh, I think I've got to send my own letter here off to, uh, off to Aria. Um, but perhaps I can pay you a visit tomorrow and uh, we'll talk about sending my friend's letter. And I'll let you get back to your work. Okay. He stands up. But, but to emphasize anything you need, I'm happy to help. Even if you, you know, if you don't have the funds, I, I'll try to make something work. Roll a persuasion check. Oh. Okay. Consistency. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know what? I'm going to set the precedent. I'm using my inspiration. <gasps> no one's ever done that. He's using his real power. Mm. Yes! <laughs> That's what I can do for you guys. Just I'm believe. never going to use mine, no. Scares me. Oh, God. Sorry. Oh, sorry, should I... Did I mess something up with no, that? No, 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 I hope I didn't mess up, because I think I might have... I'm just checking my volume, making sure that it was coming through. I hope it was coming through throughout all that. Oh, God. Ah! Oh, uh, through the stream? Yeah, I hope, I hope everything is okay. Um, <laughs> anyways. Um, okay, what did you roll? So do I just take the highest, or do I take Yeah, you take the highest. Okay, 14. You always take the highest. That was your inspiration? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that always happens to me! Mm. With a 14, you can tell that he stops, uh, and he seems like considerate. And then he's... He's standing up and he's beginning to, like, get, get you to, to, to the... To get up and start to leave the room. Uh, but... As, you, as he has gotten you, like, past the doorway, uh, he pauses. So, uh, Egon just seems to be really on the edge about to, whether to pick you up on that offer. I'll be back tomorrow if you want to talk. Okay. He extends a hand and he uh, touches one of your arms. Uh, uh, like, like he almost like reached to grab you, but didn't quite do that. He just ends up like touching your sleeve and he says, You... <sighs> Would you keep a secret? Well, um, yeah, I can do that. A big one. Uh, okay, uh, well, 
<sighs> Sorry, okay, just forget I said it. Just later. Oh, okay. <sighs> I, look, okay. I want to help you. I do. So, whatever it is, whatever needs to be done. More than anything, I just want to help. <laughs> okay, then he finishes the gesture he was doing, he grabs you by the arm and he pulls you back into the room. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> he me out and pulled me back in. And he right. closes the door and he... He, um, he leans his back against it and he wipes the, the sweat from his forehead. And then be, before he explains himself, he points at you and says, Can you keep a secret from the council? Please, they don't have to hear about this. If, if it is, could be resolved here. Well, I suppose if, uh, as long as... Yeah, as, if it's something I can just take care of on my own, there's no need to bother them, right? <sighs> Gods, I... I hope so. I hope you can. You can Talos do something. Talos is wincing. As he's... <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this man is currently standing between you and the exit as well. <laughs> um, but uh, he looks like the cornered one, and uh, again he he wipes uh, the sweat off his forehead and he says, "I, I, Talos, this is really bad." What is it? I gotta. We'll figure out the problem, and I'll. I've got a capable bunch of people. If uh, if it's something, well, what is it? <laughs> there are priests. Uh, a couple of us are. We've got a diverse, diverse set of skills. I suppose you could say. That. That sounds good. That's good. That's good. Uh, then perhaps you can help. Um. Uh, Alex, I... I have lost my faith. Oh. <laughs> That's a bomb. Oh, um... Well, uh, we should... I think we should just have a talk, then. Well, but if, uh, if a talk is all that's going to take to, to fix it, then please, please fix me. And he like goes back uh, behind the desk again. He just sits down, uh, um, pretty much slumping in a chair. Please, I fix me. Why don't you start by telling me when did this start happening? Uh, it's been a it's been a few months now. It was uh, towards the end of last year. Well, that was that was the most. It certainly started be before that, a year ago. No, a few years ago. I, I never felt worthy. Never felt worthy of the fox's blessings. But uh, <laughs> when when it happened and when when I realized what I could do, what what the fox had trusted and had trusted me with, I well, it was it was good. It was good for 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 my family. Oh. I come from a really poor house. Uh, well, a lot of my relatives cannot work, and uh, I was the youngest, and for a while just worked in our farm. But when I could, when I started being able to do this to, to, to heal people, that paid. That paid really good money. And I'm afraid that I always saw it like that. I always saw it as, as a job. And I think the fox has come to understand this about me and has taken away my powers. And now I'm stranded here on Ladaria, and and if, if the council were to hear of this, my uh, I am the the only source of income that my family has. They're they're back in Plurna, and they're they're getting money from what I'm doing here. And if the council were to hear of this, that I can no longer heal people, by the time I will be brought back to Plurna, I don't know if. If I'll even have a family waiting for me anymore. So fix no. me. Just... Say something. I'm afraid it's not that easy. 
I mean, we all go through challenges sometimes. You've probably seen a lot in your time here. It's easy to feel distant, you know? But, uh... It might be the temple. Uh, perhaps it's it's a temple. Uh, the other gods. Is, uh, it's supposed to be an open temple, open to everyone, but perhaps the fox is, is angry that there are other gods so, that outside of, of their pantheon that are being worshipped. You know, your worship is something that you do yourself. It's not... It's not the whole of this building, it's... It doesn't have to be in a building at all, you know? It's... It's all about... Your true feelings. I think we should start there, rather than looking at what's out there, you know? I gotta start looking at what's in your heart. You said you... You just saw this as a job. But, well, did you never Admittedly. love the fox? Did you never... Surely it was more than that at the start, wasn't it? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, be be before before I received my my, my powers, uh, uh, the fox was the fox. And... Well, there was this local church in, in my hometown and they used to go there every day and uh, as a boy i would help the priest with cleaning and uh, well uh, <laughs> but everything changed when i when i became a a proper priest and i could do magic and suddenly i was no longer just a nobody i don't no, uh, was my mindset so always wrong? Well, maybe it's just that you lost sight of something because... Well, because you got so lost in your day-to-day -day work. I mean, I haven't been a cleric all that long myself. You know, years, a few years. But it is easy to sometimes forget that we're doing this more than more than just following orders, more than just going through the motions. Especially when we're cooped up in a place like this all the time. Well, maybe. Maybe you need to take some time away from the work of the priest and try to spend some time reconnecting to to the fox or to Vakanoth. Oh no, no, I I have been trying, I've been trying. It's been months, and I think eventually, eventually the people at this town are going to catch up. I've just been turning away all the sick people, give, guess, tell, sending them to our doctor, telling them that I'm busy, but somebody is going to take notice eventually, and, and when that happens, I'll lose my job, and my family will, will lose their money, and, uh, you, and I'm, you everything can't, will be... You can't ever regain that connection as long as you're not being honest. Maybe they will find out, but maybe this is something that you can't do on your own. Maybe you should go back home, back to... Back to Valkanoth. No, 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 you, you don't understand. Back I cannot. I cannot afford to lose this job. The travel to Plurina is going to take over two months. But won't by the, the time I get there... They will, they will not help an imposter such as myself. No, 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 I, I think uh, you need to come clean. Else. Tell Alexa, I, please, 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 please. This is don't something tell I won't anyone. do for you. It's something you have to do on your own. I'm telling you. I think you have to come clean. Right back home. 
the church is merciful. They helped me, they'll help anyone. Believe me. You said you said you're here with other people, yes? Skilled people? Yeah, that's true. Can they keep a secret? Or they Probably. don't have to hear about this. Ah, uh, there could be uh, I could just tell you. Sure. I mean, I don't think they'd have any inclination to share your story anyways. But, they wouldn't? Uh... Uh... You wanted to stop by here tomorrow, yes? For for a letter? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Bring them to me. I'll... Uh... I can think of something. Okay, we'll talk tomorrow. I'll just kind of, like, pat his cheek. He'll be alright. He does not look alright. <laughs> in the slightest. But, uh, but he, he... He nods and he seems to, like, be trying to sort of... Uh, to just pull himself together. And says, yes, yes, yes. Um, this will work. This will work. Thank you, Talix. Don't... Don't... Uh, please do not mention any of this to the council. Okay. That's... Not for me to do anyways. This is a personal matter for you, and... Well, I think you'll come to the right decision on your own. Just think it over, okay? Uh, I'll yes. I'll keep you in my prayers, and I'll see Thank you tomorrow. You. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good, good night, then. And he, again, sort of like, kind of forcefully pushes you outside. Oof. All right, I'll just kind of shake my head. I, I'm going to... So I'm dropping four gold pieces into my litter home. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to quickly just pin a much shorter report that will go to Arya to be read there and eventually get passed along okay. to the Jade Council, uh, which will pretty much just cover everything that happened, including the state of Jamiel, but I will not talk about the temple. I'll just kind of leave that vague. Um, and I'm also going to leave uh, five silver in uh, Vakanath's uh, at Vakanath's shrine and mm -hmm. light a candle. Yeah, there's going to be like a well. little bowl. Yeah, I'll light a candle and leave it there as well. Okay. Okay, so that, those letters go into the box and I head back. All right. And now just in no time for, <laughs> just in time for Pontifex and uh, and Tekka's speech. All right. Pontifex will, like step on his thing and say, you know, hello everyone, thank you for gathering for my uh, scheduled speech. Um, beforehand, I have a friend who would like to take the platform for about a while. I hope you'll uh, show him the same interest that you came here with. And he'll like step off to the side. Yeah, Tekka walks up to the stage, nods to Pontifex, and then looks towards the audience, holding Quarter Staff in one hand and the huge handsaw in the other. Um, <laughs> oh, <God>. Ominous. <laughs> <laughs> Please give me your attention and one minute's worth of your time. If any of you have had dreams with unusual creatures, unusual objects and events, please let me know. This is of the utmost importance. Oh, dreams. Me? Talix raises his hand. <laughs> yes well yeah uh, you, you already know don't you we talked about it that night right oh okay we can speak later <laughs> <laughs> oh you meant <laughs> other people <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> oh, <how cute. laughs> so again if you have had any unusual dreams, 
I will stand by the Tresim's walkway until sunfall. Anyone describing dreams proving worthwhile or useful will be given silver in return. Thank you for your time. And uh, Tekka kind of like knocks the quarter staff on the platform twice before turning back. And I think he initially thought this would be persuasion, but it's definitely intimidation. <laughs> <laughs> I threw his hats off. <laughs> yes. Tell me about your dreams, or else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he just like, you know, wobbles the song here. <laughs> <laughs> and I will use my inspiration. Yeah, <laughs> go for it. Oh, that's not a roll. Uh, you need to press R. Over. I press R again. This has happened before. <laughs> I wonder if it's if you got flip down to the same key somehow. Right? No. Can you put it? in the tower is that Ooh. a thing we can do oh yes absolutely it's kind of yeah, big anything to get him uh, to roll that again would be a good idea yeah there you go <laughs> wait this would not be allowed this was right. a 10. hey your first roll is 19 so and uh, from now on it's going to be a rule <laughs> oh, oh no! back to 19. <laughs> it bounces really weirdly uh, yeah I feel like that should still be a 10, but you know. Pippi's telekinesis to move it. <laughs> I got my die back just because I was denied the experience of doing that. <laughs> Who wrote on all these calculators? Sorry. Unrelated. It wasn't me. I, I was I noticing mine. like. I was noticing, noticing like. Leap and boss and boss. something else. <laughs> and Wait, you put in boss. <laughs> I didn't put that. I put in lead in mine, but I didn't touch any <laughs> other. Oh, someone put boss in mine and hello in. Oh, uh, Sid. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think Sid wrote boobs in my calculator. <laughs> no. <laughs> not. Or it was I, winter. I'm getting into character as role playing. <laughs> <laughs> as role playing I as a child. Gotta mess with people's stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Tekka, the, uh, moment yeah, you, so, uh, the moment you stepped on the stage, a lot of heads turned. Even some people that were like busy um, just buying things, uh, they, they stopped and they turned to look at you. You, you you're, uh, This is the kind of attention you're used to getting, a lot of people staring uh, at you. And as you begin to talk, the attention seems to uh, waver a little bit, but you're... you're uh, Hitting off the stage with the uh, with your staff that uh, just makes a really loud noise, and you're uh, perhaps uh, unknowingly, uh, perhaps accidental, kind of uh, that that aura about you uh, that might come ac come across as uh, your words might come come across more as a threat than uh, uh, just like a kind request. Um, you see some some people just. Im Turn away when uh, when uh, when you meet their uh, their stairs, uh, and uh, um, for the time being, uh, uh, for now nobody approaches you directly. Are you going to be here for Pontifex's speech, or are you going to already be at the uh, at the tavern? Take a listen for the first few minutes and judge it from there. Sure thing. All right, Pontifex. Uh, don't worry, guys. I'm not going to actually give a two-hour speech. Because <laughs> uh, you only have 15 think, minutes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think Pontifex, like, you know, whenever uh, Tega starts to walk up, he has, like, a moment of hesitation and, like, starts to, like, you know, clap appropriately, like the golf clap. <laughs> uh, and, like, walks onto the stage and says, uh, Ahem, uh, yes, uh, thank you for the speech, uh, Tega. As he said, uh, if any of you have information about strange dreams and such, please meet him at the Tresham's Crossing uh, before sundown. Uh, he would very much appreciate it, and you will be uh, compensated appropriately. Um, on uh, the topic of my speech today, uh, I wish to talk to you all about uh, alchemically unknown substances and their existences in our daily lives. 
Uh, we seem to believe that scientifically we understand the makeup of different objects and we can, you know, ascertain what it is made out of, be it iron or copper or, you know, sulfur or whatever other elements we've discovered. But there are also uh, items uh, such as these. And he will hold up in his right hand that brass orb with the light coming out of it thing. Um, the big, like, astrolabe compass decoder ring globe thing. Uh, and in his other hand, he's holding a very small, um, it's basically a D4. Uh, and depending on where you're looking at it, uh, you're seeing a different color kind of through it. Um, like you're looking through a prism, uh, but each side's a different color. So if you guys are arranged in the way you are, um, the ones on the left would see one color and the ones on the right would see the other. Uh, and he says, uh, these are uh, items I have come into possession over my very long uh, and very traveled life. Uh, and they are, as of yet undiscovered elements. Um, I have discussed with some of the greatest minds in Azeradora, as long as some of the greatest elven minds in Elianard and uh, the capital of Osil and Sagrada, uh, appropriately, and uh, everyone is stumped. Uh, I feel like this is a bit of a learning opportunity uh, to open your mind that there are some things that we all believe are in fact solved sciences, but are in fact not. Uh, please take your time to uh, look amongst these things, and uh, if you have any input or any uh, familiarities with these kinds of things, I would love to uh, have a discussion uh, out loud, of course, as this is a public forum uh, for the case of educating everyone around you. And uh, he's going to hand off the orb to Tekka and hand off the prism to uh, Pip, I guess, and kind of have them be passed around amongst the crowd and then go on to answer any questions that anyone has and all that. Um, did, you really has just hand, did you really just hand a fancy rock to Pip and expect <laughs> him to give it to someone else? Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, I think this is one that actually... He's brought up the prison before to someone, um, someone here in the party, and, was, uh, and, and spoke of its importance to him. You showed it to the Lady of the Land. Oh, yeah, that was it. Oh, yeah, and she asked if she could keep it, and he said no. <laughs> <laughs> he said there are, like, you know, there are plenty of things that he would, but that is one of the things he cannot give away. Um, so, yeah, he's passing it amongst the crowd. These are Nazradorans. These are his people. He's not worried about them being absconded with. Um, people keep a close eye on it as it passes through the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> be my, be my sheepdog. Um, and if anyone actually says anything like narratively interesting to Pontifex about it, then sure. Otherwise, he's just going to then go on for two hours or roughly that long um, talking about, uh, you know, different elements and undiscovered elements and how things can be made out of things that we don't understand and like their applications in life and whatnot. Yeah, Brooke would probably leave like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's basically like him going over the periodic table and the table that doesn't <laughs> exist yet. Like, an hour in, Pip would, like, show you some of the different kinds of rocks that are in his pouch and ask you what <laughs> element they are. <laughs> and he will probably ascertain each of them unless he also has alchemically <laughs> undiscovered items. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he would, he would absolutely love crowd participation, and hopefully Pip acts as a catalyst to get more people involved. Uh, but otherwise, that's it. This is kind of a... It's more of an educational speech with the the you know, slim or odd chance of someone actually having some kind of constructive input on it. Um, could that prism be like a, a crystal? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's, uh, he's gonna reply. He says, yes, this is uh, exactly what it is. It is a crystal, but it is formed of uh, minerals that we don't understand, so it is not like any other crystal. Um, it seems to refract light in a very specific range of colors, depending on which face you're looking through. Um, and it has a seemingly endless depth, should you look into it. Uh, it has a effect akin to that of a kaleidoscope, but there is only one color per face. I am oh. believe that these have some connection to the elemental planes, but it is purely conjecture. Where did you get it? Uh, that is not exactly the topic of the conversation. I would prefer that we stay on topic. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried putting it in water? 
I have tried lighting it on fire, I've tried submerging it, I have blasted it with the elements of lightning and thunder, I have uh, frozen it for long periods of time, I have bludgeoned it with the heaviest hammers that I could find with the burliest <laughs> men that would uh, volunteer, and uh, nothing seems method. to have affected it. Cool, where did you get it? <laughs> uh, we're back on the subject of staying on topic. <laughs> Uh, my acquisition of it is not the important part, it is uh, how it was made, and its seemingly indestructibility. Uh, have you tried burying it in the dirt? Maybe it's like a plant seed. You know, I feel kind of silly, but no, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> there you Na go! <laughs> Na Nazradorians have the best questions. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried? Have you tried like just staring at it for a long period of time? <laughs> <laughs> How was the longest you stared at? It? Could you do one more? If you put it in sugar water, does it grow more? <laughs> <laughs> and that, that is the, the the span of of the lecture for two hours. A uh, DM. Were there any good questions that came? I'll, say, if, I'll <laughs> leave this to entirely to Winter. Whether or not Pontifex will get any insight from any of these people, or if this is purely a one-sided educational thing. Uh, sure thing. At some point, uh, um, a hand uh, is raised, uh, and uh, um, somebody ask, asks, um, uh, "Oh boy. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, Please do not ask me where I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Puts their hand down. <laughs> <laughs> the slow retraction. <laughs> yeah, that happens. And then somebody else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and somebody else asks, um, is there perhaps a chance that... Uh, um, that material came from uh, uh, an elemental plane of Earth. Yeah, that was my original uh, consideration, that perhaps this is uh, some connection to the elemental planes, uh, perhaps the elemental plane of water in specific, as uh, my people have some relation to that. And, uh, uh, but... The point of facts <laughs> recognizes, and like, as he looks in the direction of the voice, he sees this, uh, um, this uh, very tall, pretty much taller than most people around her, a uh, hairless tabaxi being the one who asked the question, and with her oh. with her, with her hand uh, still raised, uh, she continues. Uh, uh, <laughs> Have you spoken with uh, any experts uh, on the elemental planes? I have tried on uh, numerous occasions. I like to consider myself somewhat of an expert on the elemental planes, but... Uh, I have conversed with uh, the High Scriveners of Vosil, and I have uh, conversed with the other professors of the elements uh, back in Nezordora. Um, I have been inquiring about this subject for uh, going on about 350 years or so. She lowers her hand. Are you, uh, sorry, I do not wish to uh, point people out in the crowd too much. All right, would you ha perhaps be, uh, is this the woman that I met before? Yes. Would you be able to have a more in-depth discussion with me, uh, at, uh, the I, at a later date? I, uh, happen to have questions for you as well. I know this is not the topic of my speech. I apologize to everyone here, but... This seems an opportunity. The eye is not open to the public, but um, we could arrange perhaps a dinner at the tavern? Uh, sure. But, uh, that is most acceptable. Uh, we are staying there. Uh, perhaps we can reconvene in the morning? That will work for me. Okay. Uh, and then he'll like, go back and start you know, addressing the crap. And Pontifex has gotten himself a date. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hey, he got the moves. Mm. <laughs> he so already uh, said, opened with it. how old he is. Uh, for everybody else, <laughs> the next else, person, the person... Who asked gets a lightning bolt. <laughs> <laughs> for, for the rest of the group, the person who talked was this uh, uh, really tall, hairless tabaxi uh, with uh, 
wrinkled skin and it's mostly just this pale peach color but she does she does have some uh, dark gray markings that are uh, mostly reach across the back of her head of her head and on the back of her hands and uh, unlike most people around you she's dressed uh, uh, far more heavily just wrapped in these thick fur coat I'm assuming um, I I didn't re I didn't uh, I wasn't there for that since I left after 20 minutes. Probably not. All right. Um, could have thought. And of you, Talix <laughs> would be the person who has like seen her previously. Oh, I have seen her. Okay. Yeah, this is. Uh... Didn't talk to her, but you did like see her as she was walking away after having talked to Pontifex in the past. Right, All you right. probably saw us. Last time we were here, you probably saw him and her briefly mutter words or something and then part, and then that's like when we left Cleon. All right. And, um, but he did mention uh, the eye, so you probably have some inclination that she has something to do with that place. Mm -hmm. And uh, with uh, the end of Pontifex's speech... Um, we can also end the session. Nice. Uh, oh, man. Good session. What is up with Church Guy? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. That was a way, way bigger thing than I was expecting. And Talix is, like, very, very troubled by this. Man, wait till this poor guy hears that. went from a very good that, uh... day to a very weird day. Wait till this poor guy finds out that your other cleric friend you mentioned is also like heavily dabbling in the arcane and has thus far not been punished for it in any <laughs> yeah, capacity was... and is still freely throwing around divine magic just fine. Yeah, I was thinking like whenever he first said that he lost his faith, I was like, oh, maybe I should not get my friends to help on this one. <laughs> it, I am very curious, like... It... Obviously, it's not as simple as him losing his faith if he's if he's like, bring your whole group of people here, and maybe yeah. then you can help me <laughs> regain my faith. Yeah, like, yeah, it was very very strange. Definitely. Maybe very just uh, maybe his connection is just getting a little foggy. Maybe he needs to be blasted with an ample amount of divine energy. Yeah, I was about to say, have all your it's... friends beat the crap out of me. Maybe then I'll get it back. <laughs> Oh, you know, cast to... bless on everybody, and you just punch him with your god fists until he he rediscovers his faith. Or perhaps you just all have to raise your arms and give him his energy. Aww. Maybe you just have to meet your deity more face to face and just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. By the way, uh, is the elf folks still here in the square whenever Pontifex is giving his speech? Uh, he's a hoop. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I said that, and you paused, and it was like, uh. oh, I, get, I heard, I understand. Um. <laughs> that was fast. Should've taking a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Is the owl still here? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. I didn't hear what you said. <laughs> yes, the owl folk. Uh, Hooven, uh. not Hooven. Uh... I was gonna go into this uh, uh, later, but uh, okay. Well, there's okay. going to there's going. Uh, Talix would at some point uh, uh, see. <clears throat> uh, he would see Buvan uh, actually going after Tekka. Oh, after Tekka leaves. Mm. Oh man, Talix might have left. <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, we can get to that. Um, hang on, you're still streaming, right? Yes. Because I don't think we've said on stream that yesterday was our wonderful DM's birthday. True! Yeah. And tomorrow True. is our wonderful player of Brooke's birthday. Mm -hmm. Woo! True! Happy birthdays! <laughs> it's midnight for you now, right? I can it say is, it. It is. So it's actually your birthday today. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Your time. Okay. Thank you. All right, everyone. Happy birthday! Yay. One, two, three. 
Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. That's copyrighted. We're, we're having the tempo. Happy and birthday it. to you. No. Happy birthday, yes. dear. Dear, 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 dear. dear. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Ooh. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Your birthday gift uh, is Talix's um, pronunciation guide to Ladaria. <laughs> Uh, I'll take that. That is one of the best gifts ever. This time I'll do it with an Irish accent. It's signed copy, too. <laughs> uh, great session. Hey, uh, and great recap. Amazing recap! <laughs> yeah! yeah. What the, the art. No, I'll, so I'll, give you all, I'll give you all a PDF. I'll plop it in the main yeah, chat. Yeah, you'll share that, right? You'll look back over it. All right. <laughs> all right, well... Thank you very much for playing with me today, and thank you to everyone who might have followed us either live or at a later time. And I hope you're going to have a most beautiful week ahead of you. And I'll see you again next Sunday. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 All right. <laughs> Stream is Bye. over. Ah, oh, that was so good. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. Lore oh. session. Yeah, so there is so much to dig into in this town. You like you were talking to me earlier, like, oh, I don't know if I've got enough to do here. It's like, dang. We will every, find things everything to do. is a thing. <laughs> we didn't don't even get through the first day. <laughs> we didn't even get to go to the obsidian eye. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing we knew we were gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> and so it begins. The obsidian and... eye is not open to tourists. Uh, a a thirty on investigation from Pontifex, <laughs> yeah, to find a really cool magic rock. Wow, it's pretty rare cool. to have a nat thirty at level three. <laughs> like to roll a thirty, I don't think that's ever happened ever. It could happen in Evera. Yeah, oh, there's a uh, the marks. Maka rolled like a super there's high. A as long I, as you have a I plus totally four have... to the modifier and you have this this trait thing, this add a d4 to a thing, which I think a few races can do. I have this. Here, let me put it in the meme channel. I have rolled this once with disadvantage. Uh, just, a, just a month ago, about. Yeah, plus 13 will do it. Expertise wow. has crazy things. Yeah, yeah but it was... not, that's not a level three. That's what I'm it saying. Was a, like, uh, yeah, it was the... a level seven character. But with well, disadvantage, imagine if I had expertise. Cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, for sure. If I had expertise, I could roll a 32. I'm pretty sure Maka rolled like a 28 or something on one of the first sessions mm. because and Maka the has. Of finding. Yeah. Yeah, did you see extra? Oh, did you see extra? Yeah. Sorry. 30. It's super easy to mess these up. I... Like, because right clicking is how you turn the camera, but right clicking will also. We'll also select the texts on these. So if I'm frantically waving my camera around like I do, I'll hit these name tags and ruin them. Mm. None Can of us have an so identify, do we? Uh, so, uh, I don't no, know I the significance of this, but there's a bag on the floor behind Brooke's chair, um, and it's really ominous. Mm-hmm. I have seen <laughs> the two. Uh, you didn't tell me? <laughs> the DM me? scoops it up before anyone can check. No, it's... It's empty. It's uh, filled with legendary items. You should, you should have told me, and I would have thrown it in the trash can. Trash can, uh huh. No. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a garbage item. It goes in the trash. There's nothing of note in it. It doesn't matter. I don't so know why know. my like eleven. I don't know why my gut reaction was to take that bag and stuff it in a <laughs> hole. <laughs> Feed it to the dice tower. <laughs> it calls for sustenance. <laughs> oh, also, uh, we were talking about this on break. Um, I might need to trade in my inspiration die because I think I got a faulty one. What do you mean? Oh, yeah. Ever, like all five of us had our inspiration dies given to us as twenties, and then his was on nineteen for whatever reason. And mine just has a one, a two, and a three, just ominously staring at me. Well, I don't know who did that. I didn't do that. 